Anthony was having a few issues logging on, so he'll be on momentarily. I'm just curious why Commissioner Emma Moore and Commissioner May didn't have any problems. But anyway, I'll reserve that for another time. Any moment of me. Okay, um, good afternoon, Mr. Young. Let's go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today's date is April the 21st, 2022. We are convening and broadcasting this public hearing by video conferencing. My name is Anthony Hood and I'm joined by Vice Chair Miller, uh, Commissioner May and Commissioner Ema Moore. We're also joined by the office of zoning staff, Ms. Sharon Shellen, as well as Mr. Paul Young, who will be handling all of our virtual operations, and also our office of zoning and legal division. We are joined this evening by Mr. Jacob Ridding. I will ask all the others to introduce themselves at the appropriate time. The virtual public hearing notice is available on the office of zoning's website. This proceeding is being recorded by a court reporter, and the platforms used are Webcast Live, WebEx, and YouTube Live. The video will be available on Office of Zoning's website after the hearing. All persons planning to testify should have signed up in advance and will be called by name at the appropriate time. At the time of sign up, all participants will complete the oath or affirmation required by subtitle Z48.7. According to all those listening on WebEx or by phone will be muted during the hearing and only those who have signed up to participate or testify will be unmuted at the appropriate time. When called, please state your name and home address before providing your testimony. When you are finished speaking, please mute your audio. 
if you experience difficulty accessing WebEx or with your telephone calling or have not signed up, then please call our OZ hotline number at 202-727-0789. If you wish to file written testimony or additional documents, supporting documents during the hearing, then please be prepared to describe and discuss it at the time of your testimony. The hearing will be conducted in accordance with provisions of 11Z DCMR Chapter 4 as follows. Preliminary uh, matters, applicant's case, report of the Office of Planning and District Department of Transportation, report of other government agencies, report of the ANC, re uh, testimony of organizations, five minutes and individuals, three minutes, and we will hear in the following order. Those who are in support, opposition, or undeclared. Then we have rebuttal and closing by the applicant. The subject. Second. The subject of this night tonight's case, and forgive me if I get this wrong, is Zoning Commission case number 21-27, Chun Lam Design Review in this uh, Capital Gateway Zone and Relief from Court Requirements at Square 653, Lot 65, 66, 827, 829, and 830, South Capital Street, Southwest. Again, this is a design review case tonight. Okay, so with that, Michelle, do we have any preliminary matters? Yes, sir. I figure we'd take care of the um, easier ones first. The expert witnesses being proffered, um, Rich Marcus in architecture. His resume is at 27G and William Zed at 27H with Grove Slade in traffic and planning, traffic planning. And his is at 27H. Thank you, Michelle. Let's go to the architect, um, uh, Mr. Marcus, Rick, Rick, Rich Marcus, excuse me. Uh, any objections? Yeah, we have his resume in front of him. Uh, Commissioner May. Uh, not an objection, really. Um, it's just that his resume is a little unusual. We will typically see a list of projects associated with it, and I didn't see that in the resume. I just see his educational background and some things about awards. And I'm wondering if we could get some information about his past projects into the record. So maybe uh, we can bring on Mr. Marcus and just have him tell us some recent projects he's completed of a similar scale, size, nature, just something like that. Because I mean, it's 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 just light in that area. Usually, we see a lot more information about past projects. Okay, um, Mr. Young, can we can we bring up Mr. Marcus? I mean, I, I guess it's possible I, I didn't see something in there, but I thought it was just a one page or resume. His, his resume actually looks like mine, so I guess mine is light. I don't know to go back and correct mine, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a long list of projects, Mr. <laughs> Chairman Hood. All right, Mr. Marcus, when you're when you're available, you've heard uh, Commissioner May. Commissioner May, I'll let you ask the questions. Yeah, Mr. Marcus, I, I mean, I, I, I fully understand, given the what's in your resume that you must have done many similar projects. It's just that they're not shown and it's just good to have that on the record. So if you could give us some examples of other projects that you've done in your lengthy career. Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, I've had my own company. I've been working since 1987, 86. Well, that, that much is in the, re that's in the resume, yeah. so. Yeah, <laughs> um, so I've had my own company since 2000. Uh, the most recent jobs that we did, which would be uh, similar on uh, Rhode Island Avenue, 2027 Rhode Island Avenue, that's a 43-unit building. Uh, just got finished recently. It's now in the sales. Uh, they have the certificate of occupancy, and they're selling units right now. That's 43 units. It has about 8,000 square feet of retail. Um, uh, so that's probably the the closest to the size of this one it's actually it's square footage is even a little bit bigger on that building it's about sixty-five thousand square feet this one's a little bit smaller just a, a different configuration of a smaller lot on this one um another project recently 411 new york avenue uh that one just finished also that's that's uh similar but that was a um that's actually a hotel use with uh, retail inside 120 uh, rooms in that one. That's about the same square footage, 60, just under 60,000 square feet. Um, we've got a lot of mixed use like this uh, uh, that's been 
uh, over the years that we've done. Uh, we also do retail and commercial. Okay, uh, I, I think that's experience. probably. Yeah. I think that's prob probably enough. Um, and if you do wind up coming back before the zoning commission again, it would be worthwhile just including a list of some past projects. Absolutely, I should have done that. I'm sorry. No worries. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I'm going to need about five minutes. Um, um, then we, then before I do this, then we go. I'm going to need five minutes. Um, but before we do this, uh, did we decide on Mr. Marcus? I have a phone. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with Mr. Marcus. I mean, again, I just wanted to have something in the record about okay. experience and similar project. Okay, give me five minutes. I will, I'll be back at 4.18, so I apologize. Thank you. All right, is everybody available? I want to apologize. Uh, when you're at home sometime, you have things that come up. 
and I'm going to apologize. Hopefully, I won't. If I get another call back, I may need to take it too. So forgive me. I got a couple of things going on right now. All right. Um. So next, where were we? Um. I think we were looking at the. Um, so both experts are accepted. Is that what the commission decided? We have not. Have we went over Mr. Z yet? Um. For for transportation, was that not discussed? Him, but I, we've not discussed it, but I don't have any issues with this. Okay, anybody have any issues with, I think I'm pronouncing that name correctly, Mr. Zeed. I'm sure he'll let me know when he comes up. Any objections uh, in transportation? Okay. okay. So, so um, before I get to the next preliminary matter, I just want to say that Alexandra Wilson is representing the applicant. Um, Kelsey Bridges is here from DDOT. Jennifer Steingasser is going to present for OP. Um, so that's that. Um, Kels, uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, Ricky Kramer, uh, Frederica Kramer is here for the ANC. And so the last preliminary matter I have is a party status request in opposition by uh, Sheila, Sheila Samadar and Greg Kegel. Um, they're represented by um, Aristotle um, Teresa. And that is at exhibit 22. And as you know, at the new process, um, the applicant only responds by paper if they are opposed and they have done so at exhibit 25. So you have those two exhibits to review, um, which I'm sure you have reviewed um, to rule on exhibit 22 and the response in opposition at exhibit 25. All parties the requirement for the regs that they be here. I have I have something that's opening up on my computer. Right, this is crazy and it blocks me. So if I go away, just give me a moment for it to clear. Okay, uh, thank you, Michelle, for teeing that up. Uh, let me hear comments. So, so we are looking at whether or not we're gonna grant party status uh, to, and I think that's exhibit 22. Uh, so let, let me open that up for a discussion about party status. Let me hear from others first. Any objections to it or no supportive of it? Yeah, I'm I, 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 I think there's a nexus. Um, and as I and let me just start off, I think there's a nexus to, to this party status. Um, and as persuaded, I was persu I was persuaded by the uh, party status. Person who I was persuaded by their argument, I was, uh, and I appreciate the Afton's argument as well. But I think there's a nexus. I don't know if others feel that way. Uh, let me hear from others. If not, we will grant party status, and we will call this uh, party. I guess the Samanda, Samandar, and Kegel. But but when they come up, they can tell us. And I think their representatives, uh, Mr. Teresa. Okay, uh, no objections, Ms. Shannon. We will grant them party status. Okay, by consensus, and I'm sorry, um, Joel Lawson is going to present for OP this evening, not Ms. Don Gasser. Okay. All right, so can we, uh, Mr. Young, can we bring everybody up? You want me to bring in the party in opposition as well? Yeah, you can you can bring them in. Yeah. And the ANC or wait on the ANC. No, the ANC. Bring everybody in if we can get them in. Typically that's not the process, but I think it's it's easy to do that. And uh Mr. Chum Chum uh Lamb, I hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sure I'm not, but I'm sure that Ms. Wilson will correct me. All right, Ms. Wilson, the, the floor is yours. You may begin. Hi, thank you. My name is Alex Wilson from Sullivan and Barrows um, on behalf of the applicant in this case. Thank you all so much for having us here this afternoon. Um, I'm here with architect Rich Marcus, traffic consultant William Zaid, and owner um, Jason Lamb. Uh, Mr. Lamb goes by Jason. 
Um, so Jason and his family have owned these respective properties that are the subject of the map amendment um, for many years, and he is representing his family here today. We do have a presentation that we submitted into uh, the record. If Mr. Young could please pull that up. Thank you so much. <clears throat> um, so Jason and his family have been in the area for 30 years and owned this, uh, these particular properties for 15 years. The properties are improved with a parking lot, a small liquor store on the corner, two row homes on the end street side, and one on the south capital side. Next slide, please. Uh, the proposed building will be retained by the Lamb family, and they are planning to keep this as a legacy building for their family. Um, Jason's father, who owns and operates the liquor store on the corner, will move his business into the smaller commercial space along End Street. Um, they've had and continue to have many offers to purchase these properties. Uh, the Lambs have been part of this community for so long and have some development experience, so they are seeking to develop the properties themselves. Uh, for some background on the project development, the project uh, development began about four years ago. Uh, it was delayed by a landmark application by SWNA on the N Street and South Capitol Row buildings. Once the landmark application was withdrawn and a deal reached with the adjacent owners of the 1319 development, uh, this project was able to move forward. Um, Mr. Marcus will provide more detail, but the overall program of 49, uh, 49 units of residential and commercial and office space on the lower levels has remained the same throughout the years of this project's development. Uh, the project has undergone a number of design changes, including the removal of parking due to concerns of vehicular traffic in the shared alley and easement area behind the property. Um, as parking is not required on this particular site, and we wanted to be good neighbors, uh, parking was removed from the building. We also um, removed a proposed loading area on site as loading is not required and DDOT would not approve a curb cut. I know the ANSI's report raised concerns over parking and loading, and we do have Mr. Zide here to address how we arrived at the proposed curbside loading solution. Uh, with respect to some of the other ANC concerns raised in the report, Jason and our team have tried to be as responsive as possible in addressing agency, ANC, and community concerns. Uh, for example, when OPN DDOE requested we provide solar panels and meet lead gold, we agreed. Uh, when DHCD requested we provide 12% IZ square footage in excess of the required 8%, and a unit at a 50% MFI rate, we added an extra two bedroom IC unit. And now we have 12% um, set aside. I actually think it's it's almost 13%. Um, and one of the IZ units is set aside at a 50% MFI rate. Um, I've mentioned that we did remove parking as a result of discussions with the neighbors who did not want uh, to have vehicles use the alley, even though the easement agreement does not prohibit that. Um, and we've also proposed a good neighbor agreement to the ANC um, and postponed the original hearing date uh, by about two months. Um, the project has been presented in various forms to the community before filing the application. Uh, since the filing in December, we've had three or four community meetings, two smaller committee meetings with ANC commissioners, two executive committee meetings, as well as the full ANC meeting. And we've emailed directly with um, adjacent neighbors and sent plan updates uh, at every stage. We've um, attempted to be responsive to the ANC's request to honor Old Southwest. A previous version of our plans incorporated existing row house facades, um, but that was not well received by either the ANC or OP, as OP suggested we have a full setback on the South Capitol side, um, and our lower level is commercial, not residential. Um, so we adjusted that. Uh, we did review the old Southwest historic nomination from five years ago, and more specifically, the historic landmark nomination for these particular row houses in the square. Um, it noted that so social significance appeared to weigh more heavily than architectural significance. Specifically, these row buildings were used for workforce housing originally. Um, and the social significance is stated in the landmark application as the basis for that landmark status, which it has been dropped. 
Um, but we do want to respect the social significance of the road dwellings. And while we do, they are no longer affordable uh, based on location. They're no longer used for workforce housing, and these are not rent controlled units. Um, so in that sense, replacing these road dwellings with 49 units, six of which are set aside for people making between 50% and 60% of the MFI is in the spirit of the Old Southwest and the social significance and the history of these road dwellings, um, as that could be considered workforce housing within the project um, and in a location with great access to public transportation like the Metro. The proposal is also consistent with the comp plan goals of providing affordable housing, avoiding displacement and providing access to opportunity. Uh, Jason's family are immigrants from the working class in Hong Kong. So providing additional affordable rental housing in the spirit of the original buildings on this block was something that Jason readily agreed to. Um, not to mention there will be additional job opportunities for local community members uh, where there's currently only one commercial use with two employees. Uh, we look forward to hearing from the Zoning Commission, OP, and ANC at today's hearing. Uh, I, I don't want us moving forward to this hearing today to be an indication that we're not willing to continue to work with the ANC. We absolutely are. We understand they noted um, possible additional time needed in their report. Um, I think with the ANC, we just ran into some impasses with respect to parking and loading and possibly the retention of the row homes. Uh, we were hoping that instead of postponing and ending up in the same place with those items, we would be able to obtain feedback from the commission to get on the same page with the ANC with respect to those items. Uh, we are open to revising and refining aspects of the design based on feedback here today. Uh, this is a special project in that it is being developed by these longtime residents and business owners of this area. Uh, we are here today to create something positive overall in a collaborative spirit. Um, I hope you all can sense our genuine willingness to take in feedback and respond to comments as we work towards a common goal of redeveloping this underutilized land, which will be an overall benefit to um, the community. Uh, and so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Lamb to say a few comments before um, Mr. Marcus gives uh, project highlights and Mr. Zide walks through the transportation aspects. Alice. Um, hi, my name is Jason Lamb. Um, I'm representing my family today. Uh, we together are the sole owner of this project. Um, as Alice had mentioned before, uh, we have been part of the Southwest community for close to 30 years. Um, my dad owns and operates small businesses in the neighborhood um, where we provide essential services and local employment throughout the years. We also live in the row homes that we owned. As a matter of fact, my parents are still currently living in the row home. And uh, as we expand our footprint in the neighborhood, we realized that um, we have something special in that corner of the South Capitol Street and N Street. So about four years ago, we decided to put this project in motion. Our goal for this project is to improve our currently underutilized land into a legacy building where we can better serve the community by providing greater number of businesses and affordable housing opportunity in the area for many years to come. My team and I um, have put in a lot of thought and hard work into the planning and design of this project. Over the years, um, we faced many challenges from the uh, attempt to nominate as a historic landmark and historic district to uh, try to manage and address the needs and concerns of our neighbors on our design during the COVID in the past two years. Um, and today, um, we believe we have a well thought out, well thought through designs where we are creating a value added building to a to the Southwest community, which will also be fit for the grand scheme of the Capitol Gateway. Um, I hope you all will agree with us and um, thank you for the opportunity to present in front of you all today. And uh, with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Rich Marcus, who will go into detail of the design. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Rich Marcus. I'm the architect for the project. And this is a very unique site. Uh, maybe we go to the next slide. 
it says corner lot, but it's a very small footprint uh, for this area on a major boulevard leading directly to the to the Capitol building. And then the, the design intention is to create a building that's respectful to the area, and, but still of a monumental scale as part of the gateway to the U.S. Capitol. Um, like Jason said, the owners have lived here uh, for 30 years and operated businesses here. So the retail and commercial component of this property is very important to them. Uh, the building has, uh, the proposed building has retail on the ground level and then a commercial office space on the second floor. And then from the third floor, uh, eight stories, third floor to the 10th floor of re residential above, plus the penthouse above that i will walk you through the plans um, the penthouse has some commercial common space um, for the building and also uh, jason uh, did agree uh, to offer the uh, use of the space for the ward six people um, in addition to the interior occupants of the building there's also on the penthouse level is also one private unit uh, the retail floor, actually, let me, before I uh, go into a little more detail, um, you can see the five lots here. Uh, they're called out. Uh, it's the corner lot where the um, existing liquor store is that's owned by the Lamb family. And then there's two on the N Street side. N Street is on the top, and the South Capitol is, is going from the bottom to the top on this slide. Uh, the two lots pointed on the left are existing rail houses and the one small lot on the bottom on the right which faces south capitol that's a existing rail house too so those three row houses and the and the liquor store are intended to be demolished uh, for this building next slide here's the existing corner so the building in the front is the one-story liquor store and to the right you see the, the two-story row houses two of them that are part of this property um, there's a vacant area to the left of the liquor store and then one row house on the left side and all uh, four of those buildings are to be demolished uh, next slide this is from n street so you see the liquor store on the left there is a it's a little blocked by the car there's a existing curb cut you can see the car parked next to the the row house there there's an existing curb cut there and there was an existing curb cut on the south capitol side both of those are intended to be closed up uh, for this for this project next slide these are uh, some of the row houses on the n street side so the uh just as kind of typical of the the uh work workforce housing when this was built originally next slide Some more of the row houses, just examples of it. Next slide. This is across South Capitol. So another one of the small uh, one story structures. Next slide. This you see the baseball, the garage for the baseball stadium, the baseball stadiums to the right. One of the one of the larger buildings that were built recently to the left is representative of some of the buildings going on in the area. Next slide. This is a view from the South Capitol. So you can see the building to the right is the liquor store. The vacant area is parking now. Here you can see the curb cut that's existing. That's intended to be closed up. And the first uh, row house uh, to the right of those is part of this property too, and that's intended to be demolished. Next slide. Just an overview, uh, our property is, is the uh, in the yellow building. Uh, part of this capital gateway, the intention is to, uh, requirement is to set back the front of the building uh, from South Capitol Street 15 feet, and we are complying with that. That will be the front of our building. And uh, let me just go to the next slide. Just a couple more buildings of the area. You can see the mix of scale. So there's some larger high rise buildings and uh, some small low rise existing row houses and the baseball stadium up to the right. Next slide. So here you can see the existing and the proposed side by side. 
uh, site plans. On the left is the existing, you see the curb cut. To the left is uh, South Capitol and, and below, uh, hor running horizontally below the site is N Street. N Street is, uh, this portion of N Street is one way from South Capitol moving in towards the block. And you can see there's two, two curb cuts existing, one on South Capitol, one on N Street. Both of those are, will be closed up as part of this project. And then at the top, um, behind the row houses uh, that face South Capitol Street, that's the private easement that's shared by all of these uh, uh, lots that touch it, and it ends on our property, the proposed property. So on the on the right is the proposed structure, and just to follow through on that that easement. So that easement is coming from a an alley that that goes through the property, the the large building next door. Um, which has been approved, uh, that's the 1319 South Capitol building. And that easement uh, comes off of that alley and, and goes directly to the uh, side. It's actually the side of our building. The front of our building is South Capitol, and then the rear is uh, further down N Street. And that area behind our building where we show a little bit of green space, that's the rear yard. I think Someone might have referred to it as an alley, but it's not. It's the rear yard to our building, and it's just uh, part of our uh, property. The uh, the one other thing I would like to mention is that the um, the other relief that we need is a court. So the little area where the easement comes in and hits our property, there's a little square there. It's about 15 uh, feet square or so, um, and that comes into our property. It's open area. It's, it's the ending of that easement. That easement is because of the agreement and the discussions with the neighbors. We're not intending to use it for vehicular access. It's just pedestrian access, and it's more of a exit rather than an entry to the building. It's kind of a rear exit to the building. Um, but the court is that small rectangle there. That's part of a property. It's a private property. We cut it back for where the easement comes in. That allows for some extra windows there. And the reason we're asking for a relief is because of the, the height of this building and the requirement of a cl closed court uh, actually would be a minimum of 36 feet wide and, and uh, over 2,500 square feet. So it would uh, to do a proper uh, required closed court, it would take up more than half of, of the footprint of the building. So it just, it, we can't, uh, couldn't really do that. So um, to orient the building on the site, South Capitol is, is to the left. Uh, as far as the public space requirements, there's a, a kind of a double walkway here. Um, there's the curb cut, there's tree boxes. Uh, after the curb cut, there's there's some, the little slanted um, lines there, that's some uh, temporary bike parking in within that area between the tree boxes. And then there's a sidewalk and, and then we have some green space. There's some tree boxes um, that would be new. They, their intention is to line up with the existing front yards of the row houses up on, uh, up further up S uh, South Capitol. And you can see those are colored in green right now, and that line comes down and lines up, and that's where we're taking our our, uh, our shrubs and, and uh, green boxes there. And then that also creates an area uh, further in front of the building. That's intended to be public space, um, but also the, the use and the, the final design of it would be dependent upon what tenant is there and how that tenant interacts with outside, but it's intended to be public and open to the public. On this end street side, a similar layout where there's the, the curb and then some tr existing tree boxes on that side. There is the the existing curb cut would be closed in, um, and then you have a sidewalk, and then you have some more green space, and um, then also some some more uh, public sidewalk space next to the building itself. The residential entry is in the center of that side. And I'll describe it more as we move into some uh, uh, more uh, closer drawings. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out here is that the from the edge of the building, from the edge of the property on the right over, uh, there's a 50-foot um, 
loading area defined in front of the building. And then behind that, um, uh, the back of that over to the crosswalk, that's the loading and unloading area uh, designated. So the intention is not to have any parking right in front of the building, but to have some pick up and drop off area and also the loading area. Can I get this quick, quick question before you change slides? Yeah. On the slide on the left versus the slide on the right, I mean, all of those townhouses that are shown, townhouse lots that are shown on the left are not shown on the right. Are they going away as part of the other project? I don't remember. They are they are part of the other project, but the, that other project is also keeping uh, some of the fronts of those row houses. So the two story portion of the front house, the front of those row houses is kept. You'll see it in in the uh, some of the uh, other images that we have. Come. All right, thanks. Okay. Next slide, please. This is the cellar level. Uh, so there's some utility space down here, but we are showing the bike, the permanent bike storage there. We're, we're, we're required to have 18, but we're actually providing 24 and two of those are tandem and they're all horizontal uh, parking spaces for bikes. Next slide. Here's the main floor uh, and the intent is there's the blue area is retail space. So there's a larger retail space to the left uh, along South Capitol and a smaller one to the right along End Street. The one on End Street is intended to be for the liquor store. So the owners would put their liquor store in the building uh, in the smaller space. And the larger space to the left um, is intended. The first thoughts are, are coffee shop and cafe. Um, we are at least two years out uh, of uh, finding tenants for this. Um, and today, uh, with the retail market the way it is, it's 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 tough to we we wouldn't be able to line anybody up at this moment for uh, for this space. But the liquor store, because they are the owners, they are intending to put their their liquor store in here. And then you can see from the end street side at the center of the building, there's the entry, the direct entry to the upper floors. So that's the pink area inside. So it comes directly in. There's two elevators and and the lobby space. Um, it's intended, the trash is intended to be completely inside the building. So there's residential uh, uh, compactor um, and residential trash area and there'll be separate areas for the retail spaces. The, um, the rear yard, we're calling it the pedestrian service access. Um, that will have a gate at the front of the building, at the front of the property to face the sidewalk. But when uh, people or or uh, small trucks are offloading, they will go up the pedestrian uh, service access and enter the building at the back side of that where you see the pink corridor, and that will lead you back to the rear of the freight elevator. So um, loading and offloading and trash will be coming down the rear side of the building, that what we're calling the pedestrian service access, and out to the street. Um, let me just interrupt. Mr. Marcus and uh, Mr. Young. I noticed on the BZA uh, last week that the applicant was talking, they were able to kind of show that pointer. I don't know if you have that, if you can do that, Mr. Marcus, try it and see if it works. If not, don't worry about it. Oh, you want me to uh, mark I it? To see, a, I want to see if, even though it's coming from his, <laughs> some kind of way that worked last week, I don't know what, how that was done. Maybe Mr. Sure. Young, you can help me. So I think I need to request to annotate. So I'm oh, so that person, that's right. You know what? Yeah, they showed the, they showed the. Uh, uh, I think that's what we're going to start doing because you're you're talking about the loading dock, and it would be good sure. if you could point. So because we do have the public watching it, uh, but for right now, let's just keep it like it is. I, that's something that uh, we'll put in the parking lot and deal with it later. Well, he, I think he, I he can be able to do, do it now. now. If you, yeah, if I so, uh, let me just try it. So. Um, I'll just mark something right here. There you go. Can you see in the red? Yep. That's Good. my, that's my little mark. Okay, great. Okay, great. Uh, that's Thank not you. our property, but that's my test. <laughs> um, okay. So let me point out, so the, the loading zone is here. And if uh, 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 someone dropping off or loading or the trash pickup would enter here, there is a gate at this point. Whoops. Oh, there we go. That's better. Uh, there is a gate here 
and then a uh, person would bring the, the stuff back to this door and that that's the entry to the that's the rear entry to the building and then they would come in and go to the freight elevator which is right there the um and this is the drop off zone here and will Zaid will will talk more about this in detail but I'm just pointing out where where it is the entry to the um upper floors is the center this portion here and then the other areas are public in front of the building but they're also um open to the to the public is that helpful yeah, that's very helpful. I appreciate the markings. Thank you. And I'm sure the public does as well. Sure. Okay. Um, also, let me point this out just to be clear. This area here, because this is part of the relief we're asking for, this is what's called a closed court in the zoning uh, regulation. So that area, it's open to the sky. It's open to the private alley, uh, private easement in the back. Um, but, but it's only about 250 square feet. Um, so that's much smaller than what's the regulations require. So that's why we're asking for relief from, for that. Everything else is, is following the, um, requirements. This, I would point this out too, just to be clear, the property line lines up with the other that's here. So where the building is set back 15 feet on the South Capitol side. And then the rear yard is actually a 15 foot setback um, from the adjacent property here. So that's open to the sky also. Go to the next slide. Okay, I need to erase that somehow. Um, I think if you can you undo or clear? Um, I should be able to, yes um there we go i didn't do that but thanks for the help um so this is the uh, second floor it's the it's it's all open commercial floor open to future commercial office tenants next slide please this is a typical floor uh they might be slight variations but the layout is the same there's six units per floor three are two bedroom units and three are one bedroom units. We have um, we have called out on a couple of these plans which units are assigned for the IZ units, the affordable units, and there are four um, two bedroom units and two one bedroom units, uh, which will get us up over twelve percent um, for the for the IZ units. Um, next slide, please. And you can see uh, there's the window bays that, that jut out, those are glass. Um, and then there's balconies uh, on both sides, on the South Capitol side and also on the N Street side. Next slide, please. So the plans uh, are pretty much the same for the residential units. Next slide, please. Next. And next slide, please. Get to the penthouse. So this is the penthouse. Um, the kind of olive color, that's the common space. And that's on that face is the South Capitol side. And we'll have some open uh, roof terrace on the outside. Um, and the common space is shared space on the inside. And like I mentioned before, uh, Jason is is uh, would be welcoming the Ward 6 uh, people to say, uh, use the space for their uses also. Uh, and then the blue area in the back is another two bedroom unit. So there's one unit on the uh, one private unit on the um, penthouse with a with the accompanying roof terrace. Next slide, please. Just a roof plan. Um, there'll be some green roof. We we need to adhere to the the green area ratio, and because of the lead uh, gold uh, requirements, we'll have some green roof uh, up here, and we'll also have solar panels. All that will be designed in much more detail later. Next slide, please. Here's the end street side. Um, I will point out there's a issue. Um, this is actually, there's a, the wrong title on it. This is actually 1301 to the left and 13, 
19 on the right. So that building is an L shape. The adjacent building is an L shape in plan. It touches N Street on this side, uh, on the N Street uh, elevation, and then it 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 L shapes and it touches South Capitol behind our building. So our building fills in the corner um, of of that block. So our building is on the is on the left, and you can see in general we have some three D views that we'll get to shortly, but. In general, there's uh, the bottom level is the retail. To the right here, there's a, there's the gate which separates our uh, the uh, the rear yard from the front public um, sidewalk. And you can see there's a, there's a 15 foot setback. That area uh, here is setback. Uh, that's open, and the, their building is beyond uh, the face of the existing building to the right, and, uh, and our building is is close to the um, to the street, and that other portion is far back where I where I drew that red marking. So our building is is retail on the bottom level, commercial on the second floor, and then from the third to tenth floor is the um, residential units, and you can see there's window bays that that. Um, come out on the uh, in various points on the on the facade, and then the balconies with the railings are that center section, and then the penthouse is set back uh, per the penthouse regulations on the top. Next slide, please. This is the South Capitol view. Our building is to the right, and then the existing building and some of the existing row houses that were kept are on the left side. And you can see our building, um, it's a small footprint, it's about 5,100 square feet, just a little bit over, um, but it's a 10 story building. So it's a small footprint with a, with a monumental scale. Um, and when you compare it to some of the other buildings, including the adjacent building, the 1319 building, it's about one fifth the size of that building. Uh, next slide, please. These are the uh, other elevations of the building. Um, this is actually the south elevation. Uh, south Capitol would be on your right. You can see the existing row house, the two-story row house is, is there shaded in the foreground. And then uh, the, the slide, the uh, image to the right is the west elevation. And then some of these, the uh, they do butt up right to the uh, property line, but our intention is to provide um, some at-risk windows there. So um, we weren't doing blank facades, trying to do as much glazing as we can. Next slide, please. It's a section. Uh, we are just under the 110 feet required and the penthouse is over top of that. And we just have one penthouse level. Next slide, please. Some of the materials used, uh, it's a combination of brick. The main massing of the building is brick. The window bays are uh, metal and steel. Um, and then there is some uh, plantings. Uh, planter boxes are, are very much level with grade. Um, they don't come up any distance to uh, dis discussion with the public space. Um, and, and trying to follow the public space requirements. And we have some slightly different um, paving in areas. Next slide, please. The three-dimensional image, our building is on the right, and we, we put it in context with the uh, what we're calling the 1319 building. Um, and you can see the, the massing of it is, is the same height. Um, and I, I know that the A and C worked for a, a long time with the neighboring building. Um, the neighboring building is all residential. It does not have any commercial space within it. Our building is is different approach than that. It's on the corner. It's we have commercial and res, and retail space. And our approach is to to create it, uh, as much transparency on the ground level as possible. We have show windows 
on both sides on the South Capitol side and also the end street side, trying to keep as much glass and transparency and relationship uh, and keeping it as open to the sidewalk and streetscape as possible. Next slide, please. A few more images and kind of looking up uh, South Capitol. Top left is looking up South Capitol. The bottom left is looking kind of down South Capitol with the baseball stadium to the, to the left. The top right view is from the end street, the baseball stadium in the, in the distance. Next slide, please. Some closer views uh, and you can see the intent is there's sidewalk. Um, uh, the main sidewalk areas, there's a, there's a curb and then the tree box and the main sidewalk area. And then we have some separation with some uh, low plantings and tree boxes uh, on both sides, on the end street side and also on the South Capitol side. And then there's also some plantings up against the building. And between those tree boxes and the building is another public area, um, which would be a combination depending on the tenant and or some benches and, and allow for always allow for the public to use. Um, and you can see uh, the top left is the corner, the top right is the end street side. You can on that side, you can see in the center of the building is the residential entry, and there's a separate paving which creates a lead walk up to the building on that side. And then down the lower view is actually up end street. Um, from further end, end street, looking back towards our building, you can start to see the existing row houses and the uh, front yards that they have. And our intention was to pull that line of the, the green front yards over towards our building and create the green space in front, uh, playing off of that line. Next slide, please. A couple uh, kind of bird's eye views. And here on the left, you can see how much larger the, the adjacent building, the 1319 building is than, than ours. Ours again is on a small, um, a smaller lot, small footprint. And then on the right is another, just another view. See the baseball stadium on the upper left of that one. Next slide. The corner view, um, the adjacent building is behind in the terracotta block. Um, but here you can see we, what we're trying to do is create the, the transparency on that bottom level um, and activate the street and enhance the pedestrian uh, experience along the South Capitol and the end street sides. Next slide, please. This is the view up South Capitol and in the distance you can see the Capitol Dome and this is the the experience you get driving in through this capital gateway zone on the right is the baseball stadium on the left is the existing building in the foreground the the terracotta building uh is the 1319 building which is not there now but we we have it in this 3d view and then our building is is the next one there um so we're uh following the the massing of that line on the left side next slide please mr, mr. marcus let, let me yes, explain sir. i'm looking at the clock I don't know if you've been watching the clock. Yep. You now, you, you know, if you can stop the clock for a second, Mr. Young. Uh, and I will tell you that it's obviously you're going to have to present again. Um, and we, we, um, I don't know where my colleagues are, but I believe that there's some more work to do. And I appreciate Ms. Wilson's open comments. We have an ANC uh, who's opposed. We have a party who's in opposition. And I heard Ms. Wilson's comments about continuing to work. And I think both can be uh, work with, with the ASC as well as the party in opposition. I don't want to waste your time. And I don't want to waste the commission's time, uh, but, but I will let you continue and let you hear comments from us. I'm not sure where everyone else is, but I know where I am. Uh, but I just wanted you to know you've taken up most of the time and you only have one minute and two seconds. I don't know if Mr. Z is going to, uh, by law, we have taken up the time for this case, I believe. Michelle, how much time did you put on the clock? It was 40 minutes. Okay, so you have another 20 minutes. But I will tell you this, uh, Mr. Marcus, I believe you would, we will hear this again, and I'll leave it at that. Okay, uh, thank okay. you. Okay. 
Thank you. Actually, that was the end of what I was saying. I was going to uh, leave it to William Zaid to talk about the transportation and the loading. Okay, Mr. Zaid, and then we will give our comments, and then I want to get to open. We will have cross by both the party and the ANC. Uh, but you've heard my comments, and I'll see what my colleagues are. We will address this uh, because I think um, anyway. I'll leave it at that for now. So let's go to Mr. Z. Is is the presentation still showing? It's not showing on my feed anymore here. Okay, here we go. If we could start on slide thirty six. Here we go. Okay, so the site is located less than a quarter mile from the Navy Yard Ballpark Metro Station, uh, which is close to employment, recreation, retail, and other amenities. Along the site frontage, N Street is one way only westbound and is approximately 28 feet wide, which provides adequate space for curbside parking on both sides of the road with approximately 12 feet available for a travel lane in the middle. Um, we'd just like to note the way the way the plan is shown it's it's reversed so it's one way coming you can turn on to n street from south capitol street so if you're looking at the plan um it's to the right so it's one way to the right on the plan westbound we can go to slide 37. the development program includes 49 dwelling units approximately 3500 square feet of retail and 4500 square feet of office space on the second floor no on-site parking and no on-site loading are required or proposed for the project. The project proposes to exceed the zoning minimum bike parking requirements with 24 long-term bike spaces and four short-term bike spaces. Um, as, as Rich noted, the bike room is going to include two cargo slash tandem spaces, and there will also be electrical outlets for e-bikes and scooters. One additional note on the bike room is, as as we've shown, we have 24 spaces marked on there. So that's just on the ground. If if more spaces are needed, there is the ability to put racks to go vertical and essentially double a lot of those up if there's the demand for it. No curb cuts are proposed, and the redevelopment will include removal of both existing curb cuts, one on South Capitol Street, which is a pretty wide curb cut, and then the existing curb cut on N Street. This will provide an uninterrupted pedestrian flow along the full uh, two sides of the site, both of the street frontages. We can go to slide 38. The development is expected to generate fewer than 25 peak hour peak direction vehicle trips. Um, the traffic study was scoped with DDOT and DDOT agreed that no vehicular traffic analysis were required, only a transportation statement. The residential and commercial uses combined will generate approximately 12 total AM and seven total PM peak hour trips. And that's a combination of the inbound and the outbound traffic. This equates to approximately one vehicle every five minutes during the morning peak hour. And that's before offsetting for existing uses. So the net change in traffic is approximately nine new AM vehicle trips and one new uh, PM vehicle trip. So from here we can go if we actually go back up to slide 37. Okay. The DDOT report supports the project's proposed curbside loading and no on-site parking condition. DDOT's requested edits to the TDM and LMP were made and submitted under separate cover. Um, a summary of the TDM and LMP components are provided on slides 39 and 40. Um, if you do want to look at them, we weren't, we weren't going to go through them in detail at this time. So circling back to address some concerns that have been noted through the community engagement process, no parking is provided on site as allowed in the CG2 zone and in line with DDOT's goals for buildings with excellent access to public transportation. Um, this condition is supported and encouraged by DDOT for this project. To clarify regarding offsite parking, the site is not proposing to rely on any offsite parking to meet parking requirements as no parking is required by zoning. At the request of some community members, we have reached out to Colonial Parking as they have several garages in the area to identify if any garages uh, may be able to offer monthly parking in the future if a resident were to want to keep a vehicle off site. We will continue to coordinate with both Colonial Parking and the adjacent 1319 development, which is going to have, and I believe it above um, parking ratio, 
and uh, to see if spaces could be made available. Also, we are not proposing to use the Nationals garage facilities um, for any parking. I think that was mentioned at some point. So I just wanted to clarify that. With no parking proposed for the site, it is our expectation that future area residents that need to keep a vehicle on site would seek a unit in one of the other nearby buildings that provide on site parking. This, this building's location near Metro and immediately across from the National Stadium is ideal for encouraging non auto mode share and a reduced reliance on vehicle ownership. A building with no parking will represent a different product offering than other buildings with parking on site. And similar to buildings that do not allow pets, residents will seek out a building that fits their specific needs, especially with numerous operate, uh, other options available in the area. There are two other uh, buildings within this block that both offer garage parking if, if somebody really needs to have that in the building that they live in. Now, the original plan did explore vehicular access from the rear alley easement to provide parking on site. However, this was opposed by neighbors and had significant maneuverability issues given how small the site is um, with access to below grade parking only achievable via a vehicle elevator. There was no possibility of ramping down. With no ability to also ramp down from end street within the building footprint to access below grade parking, vehicular access from end street would require ramping down in public space and would, um, as our assumption, would not be allowed, especially with no parking required for the property. Three existing curbside parking spaces and one curb cut are proposed to be removed along N Street, along the property's frontage, to provide a pickup drop-off zone and 50-foot loading slash delivery space. A loading management plan has been submitted and approved by DDOT that will govern loading activities and require a loading dock manager to schedule all of 1301's loading activities within that loading zone. They will have the ability to cone off the loading zone ahead of scheduled delivery to ensure availability if needed. Residential move-ins and move-outs can also be scheduled to not occur during stadium events. No loading is proposed on site and none is required by zoning for fewer than 50 dwelling units. Curbside loading is supported and was encouraged by DDOT. The developer will continue to coordinate with DDOT on appropriate signage for the loading zone as they have requested um, to try and provide the best condition possible. The plan originally did explore rear loading, but it was not physically possible to get a 30 foot truck around the corner to the alley easement. So making that turn would require encroachment on one uh, or both of the adjacent properties. So it could not be achieved. Further, there would be no way for the loading vehicle if it even could get around the corner to turn around once on site to leave. The plan shifted to a surface loading area in the rear yard, which is shown on the side, the, we're looking at the plan on the right side of the building along N Street with a relocated N Street curb cut. This would require back-end maneuvers across public space, which was opposed by DDOT. Further, neighbors were opposed to loading vehicles parking in that space. With opposition from DDOT and the neighbors, the plan was adjusted to provide a curbside loading area as requested by DDOT. As previously mentioned, the LMP loading management plan will govern loading operations in this space. Further, N Street is approximately 28 feet wide in front of the site, which is wide enough for parking on the north side, the pickup drop off or loading zone, depending where you are, on the south side of the road and leaving approximately a 12 foot vehicular travel lane in the middle. Being a one way street, we only need to accommodate one vehicular travel lane. So 12, 12 feet is, is pretty wide in the district for a travel lane. You can go all the way down to nine or 10 feet. Without the pickup drop off zone, food, ride share, and other short term delivery drop offs pickups would likely have nowhere to park and stop in the street, as has been noted they do today. They would not only they would not use on-site loading for these activities, even if it were provided, as that would be closed um, to unscheduled deliveries. The pickup drop-off zone provides a space out of the vehicular travel lane for these activities to occur. And that is that's all I have on traffic, and happy to field any questions. Thank you. Well, I think that concludes our presentation, and we're happy to answer any questions. Okay, I thank you. Um, when when we hear this, some of this again, which I believe we are, um, at least from my perspective, 
I would like for us to, we got to remember the public is looking at what we do. And I would like for us to show when you're talking about the loading dock and, you know, you know, we need to show what we're doing. So let's, let's work on that. Um, and I'm going to actually ask my colleagues and as well as, um, uh, Mr. Young to remind me as we go along, even in other cases, I think that's important. All right, uh, thank you uh, for your presentation. Let's see if my colleagues have any follow up questions or comments, uh, beginning with Commissioner May. Uh, thank you. I do have a handful of questions. So, um, what my name? Um, so, uh, Mr. Marcus made reference to the Lamb family living in the area and having businesses in the area. Did I understand that correctly? I mean, I mean, not that it's really that relevant to a design review. I was just curious um, if that was actually correct. Yes, um, my family still currently operate the uh, liquor store there, and they still currently live in Wonder World Home. And I, in the past, I have lived in my world homes as well, but then okay. I, since then, I moved. Okay, I understand. Wait, I, yeah, I was just interested to know that the, the Lambs actually live in the neighborhood, or at least some component of the Lamb family lives in the neighborhood. Okay. Yes, uh, yeah, we've been living in the neighborhood for a long time. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, the first question is about the easement. Uh, I just want to clarify because it's it, I, who, what does that easement say, and why, why, how can you use that? As a uh, egress from the building. I can talk a little bit about that. Um, yeah. So the the easement, um, Jason and his family are a party to the easement back there. It's an agreement between those neighbors um, that just allows shared access. I, I believe it came about during the thirteen nineteen negotiations, and Jason can correct me. Um, but no part of our building itself is on the easement. Um, it just, it allows for shared access okay. and egress in that alley back there. Okay. Or in, yeah, across the easement to the alley. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, is it actually necessary? Uh, for egress from the building because you have egress into that rear yard that leads to the street. I'll have that's Rich an ar speak architectural to that. question. Yeah. Right. Uh, no, um, from a code point of view, you could use that side, uh, that rear door. Right. So you you could just not have that door, not have the door that goes onto the easement at all. Well, it's actually that area, that square footage, that 250 square feet is actually part of this property. Uh, so I think you'd want to be able to go out and maintain it. Right, but you can put a fence around it. You, you. No, you cannot. No, you still, actually you can't. I don't think, I don't think you can put a fence around it because it's supposed to be open to the easement. Your, there's a requirement that your closed court be open to the easement. So the, part of the easement, the closed court is part of the easement area. So it, we have to allow for access for all of those who are parties to the easement into our property, yeah. essentially. Okay. So that was that that property was your contribution, as it were, to the easement area. Correct. Now I understand. Thank you. Um, and then, uh, all right. So I have some simple questions. Then I'll I'll I'll, I'll get to the the harder one. Um, the uh, lead level. I did see at some point that it, that you are um, going for certification and it would be at the gold level, right? Okay, so there's a statement in the request for flexibility that says vary the items in the lead scorecard so long as the project receives lead certification. So I assume you don't mean lead certified, you mean certified at the gold level. Correct. I should have put that in certified at the gold level. Okay, so that, that should probably be correct. Um, uh, again, minor point. Um, I don't, maybe you mentioned this, but is there capability for charging uh, e-bikes in the bike room? Yes, there is. In the TDM plan, we've included a commitment 
um, for at least 10, at least at a minimum, 10 percent of right. the spaces will include power outlets. All right, thank you. Sorry, I missed that. And uh, do you have an estimate of the solar generation capability that will come from the panels that you've agreed to put on? Not at, not at this point. Okay. I assume that you can do that at some point, right? Because that's that's something we often see. And the target is to, you know, get to a certain percentage so that you can, I don't know, power the public spaces when they're building or something like that. It would be useful to know exactly what's coming from that. Sure. Yeah, we will be looking into that. Thanks. Yeah, okay. Um, all right. How many on-street parking spaces will be lost uh, when these loading and pickup areas are designated there there's approximately room for two vehicles um, just next to the crosswalk today so those those would go away to accommodate the pickup drop-off zone and then um, in front of the row homes there is currently space for approximately for one vehicle parking space so so that would be that would be lost so three total it would be three total okay yes um, and would the building be eligible for um, residential parking permits? I, I believe this section of South Capitol Street is, uh, I, I can check actually while we're, while we're sitting here, but I believe my recollection is that it is eligible. It's eligible? Let me, let me, I can verify that. Okay, so we, I think we do want to have clarity on that. Um, I'm, I'm checking. I'm checking right now. So yeah, I was assuming that it would be a commercial street, and so if your entrance is on a commercial street, you're not eligible. But um, if that's if it's something, if if the building is eligible for R P P, uh, then uh, I think that raises a much bigger issue with the so, availability of, or the impact of parking on neighborhoods. Okay, so let's talk about the design. Um, so the original design that I saw. Um, seemed solid enough um it was a good starting point um but what you wound up with now is i think a significant um it's gone significantly downhill from where you started um there are some really odd features in it and i don't know if this this my comments align with the concerns of the anc or not um these are just my concerns um certainly we've reviewed a number of buildings in this area where the design approach was more sympathetic to the tall buildings that we find uh, throughout the Southwest neighborhood. But um, I mean, the, the glass projecting bay on the corner um, seems quite out of place. Um, the, 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 the jig jog that's happening with the, the bay projections, God, that's weird. It's just weird. I mean, I understand you're trying to get a little bit of balcony space for some of these units, but it's not even enough space to have two people sit down. I'm not even sure it's enough space for one person to sit down. And it just, it just, it makes the, the design of the facade kind of upsetting. Um, and the porthole windows, I don't get that at all. I mean, why did you go from full height windows to these little, you know, these little things? Um, they, they, they look really, really out of place. So, I mean, I think the whole design has gone downhill from where you started. Um, and I'm just, and I, and I'm lumping these all together because I would kind of like to understand from you how it progressed to this point. What were you trying to accomplish to get to this? And, and, you know, I mean, I saw how some of it might have related to the, the, um, Office of Planning's urban design review, um, but not necessarily all of it. I'm sure they didn't tell you to put in porthole windows. Um, so I, I just, you know, can, can you explain that? And because I think you're going to need to do more work on it. Um, but if you can explain, so I understand what I'm, why it looks the way it does. Sure. Yeah. The, the building, so from where we started, the building changed substantially. So, um, the, uh, it, Previously, at one point, when we had the vehicular entry in the back, and then, and it wasn't uh, uh, we had to redesign the entire the entire building. Um, there was some comments coming from originally we didn't have any outdoor balconies 
Um, and that's just something that's that's really uh, looked at uh, favorably these days. Everybody likes outdoor balconies. Um, hold, on, hold on, hold on. There were outdoor balconies in the first design that's, that was submitted. It may be less, and it may not be what was originally originally designed. And we sure. only know it's in the record. So if you could speak to yeah. what changed from what we received in the record to today, that would be most okay. helpful. Yeah, I'm going back further. Sorry. Oh, yeah. um, it's okay. I don't care about that. Yeah, no, no. I was just trying to think of what the what you saw originally. Um, so I think the the main thing that you probably would have seen, uh, I think the bays. It, we didn't have a corner uh, bay that wrapped around. Um, you might be referring to that. Maybe we had uh, at one point we had some balconies on the corner, um, yes. and there were some comments about um, uh, from the ANC. There was some feedback on the balconies. Didn't like the way the corner was working. We were just trying to. Clean that up. I, I guess we were moving towards a place we were trying to simplify, um, and uh, uh, the, the the relationship of the building to the street level, and also the balconies from the from the residential uh, on up. Um, and some of that uh, changed quite a bit too with our meeting with the office of planning we got some very specific feedback of our the relationship to the building to the area and to the to the sidewalk and the streetscape itself um so the approach to the building did change did change quite a bit and i didn't i didn't you know i i, I didn't mention anything about the ground floor or the first two floors um because i do think that that's okay right that's the yeah. part of the building that i think did get better but the rest of it i mean i'm looking at a501 of uh, exhibit 2g and maybe paul if it's possible for you to pull that up i think people would understand better what i'm talking about um and i i see what you mean about the corner balconies i think that that was probably the feature that was most problematic in this design but sure. the rest of it i mean the approach to the the windows the the, the punch windows that are within the brick um the the bay projections made more sense um having the um uh, I think having the balconies at the uh, corners of the building, you know, not at the corner of South Capitol and N Street, that's the one that's problematic. The other ones, I think, is, you know, that actually, um, at least in the, the images that I saw here, I thought those worked relatively well, and, and I thought they were consistent with uh, a lot of what we've seen in um, uh, taller buildings in Southwest. So, mm -hmm. um, well, I, I, Paul didn't bring up the image, but maybe everybody could take a look at A501 on Exhibit 2G um, if you're interested in seeing what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, that I mean, I, I guess we'll wait to hear what um, the specific concerns of the Office of Planning may be if, if, to the extent that they still remain with, from their urban design section and then the ANC as well. Um, but I do think that this the whole facade design needs additional work um, to get to something that's more fitting for the context, but also just, just looks better. I'm sorry, it's done it. It's just I feel like you've gotten um I, I understand the challenge of trying to grapple with all the different people who are telling you what to do with the design. But in the end, um you know this is not a uh What's the, the the analogy? A horse designed by committee is a camel. Um, this isn't even a successful camel. So I think that's if. Uh, oh yes, um, Mr. Zai. Yeah. So I, I was correct. So I, I remember we had we had looked at this and discussed this before. So this this block at the RPP line jogs and it does go down this section of South Capitol Street. It's likely a legacy block due to the row homes that are there. Yeah. So um, the developers fine um, and will commit to restricting no RPP in leases. So adding that to leases that um, residents okay. are not allowed to, to seek an RPP permit. Okay. Um, yeah, I know. I mean, some members of the commission don't necessarily believe that that's an effective solution. I personally believe it, it is, but um, we can get into that discussion um, in light of the rest of the testimony that we hear. Okay. I have talked long enough. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and we can pass it on. You know, RP, uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Mayor. And yeah, I'm the one, one of the main ones who talks about RPP and putting people on promised land. So, what, what, um, 
one of the things that I do, I do know, I do know we have a scheduling issue that we're going to have to deal with. Um, uh, so if at seven o'clock, wherever we are, we may have to stop for 30 minutes. So I'm kind of giving everybody an advance notice because the way we're moving, it looks like we're going to be here until seven o'clock or after. Uh, so let me go to uh, Commissioner Imamura. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, I will try to uh, keep my comments brief. I think Commissioner May has touched on uh, many of the uh, comments that I had teed up. Um, I wanted to ask the jig jaw uh, as weird. I certainly, um, that was the thing that stood out to me the most, uh, Mr. Marcus, and that you had a certain sort of rhythm and proportion to your facade, and then it fell off on both corners of the building there, and something happened. And um, I think Commissioner May is right in that uh, she, A501, actually just had some more articulation in the elevation or in the, um, in the facade. Uh, so designed by committee, uh, it's going to be out difficult. Um, this is where uh, it looks like just sort of design sensibility kind of um, fell off a bit and the elevations are a bit flat. And I think um, that it has a lot to do with not only just the way they're designed, but also uh, the way they're drawn. So just, I would encourage you to work on your line weights um, so that that helps punch up your elevations. I had a difficult time um, understanding and you had pointed it out too, uh, in, Slide 23 on your elevation there, sort of flip flop. Um, just some typos there also on elevation 23 and 24, or uh, slide 23 and 24 there. Um, elevation is, uh, there's a typo there. Also notice on slides 17 through 20 on your floor plans, there seem to be, I think, uh, a two bedroom unit, but you call out uh, one bedroom, one bedroom. So I just go back and, and double check that. It appeared, uh, I think, and I, I'm not sure, uh, the graphics were a little scant, um, or the labeling, were those water heaters and HVAC units in each, uh, there's a closet in each uh, unit, there's sort of, it was difficult to tell what those were. Um, is, it, is, is that what you were trying to illustrate uh, for each unit? There's a water heater, and a HVAC unit, and a closet. All of them had all units had it except for one. I just couldn't. They weren't labeled, so it was difficult to read what that was. Yeah, we'd have to bring it up, but it could have been possible. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Young, if you could bring up uh, slide 17, 18, 19, or twenty. And I, the reason I just bring this up. Uh, Mr. Marcus, is that uh, all the units seem to have them except for one in the southwest corner? That's great, Paul. Um, so, oh, uh, yeah, that's a mechanical. Yeah, I see it. Um, it's, it's a mechanical, it's intended to be a mechanical closet. Yeah. Okay. And all the units have it except for the one in the southwest corner of the building. I guess in, on plan, it's northwest. There's no mechanical space in there. Is that intentional? No, uh, it's just not shown yet. Yeah. So, uh, but it will be, you may want to just take a look at that. Sure. Um, on the penthouse in slide 21, Mr. Young, if you go to that, I, it wasn't clear to me uh, how access to the uh, common rooftop terrace there and the private roof terrace. Is there access? Yeah, absolutely. There would be. So, yeah. Um, There'd be combinations. Some of these windows would would be sliding windows that would open, sliding doors and windows that would open. Uh, it's not shown clearly here. Um, we could get into more detail on that stuff. So. Right. I think just again, kind of a little more refinement um, sure. is needed in these uh, these drawings. Um, sure. All right, uh, solar capability, as Commissioner May pointed out, that was another question that I had at this stage. We should probably nail that down. Um, so that's.
looking for this type of I would just say, I know there are some comments um, in the record just to, generally about the landscaping. Um, and I know you had uh, articulated several sort of uh, planter boxes um, and you will you know, continue to work with all stakeholders there. Uh, sometimes smaller planter boxes just don't afford really much of an opportunity at all. So I would just uh, take a closer look and maybe um, combine those into bigger, bigger beds. Um, Certainly the way they're laid out to define um, sort of the public space versus semi-public space behind that, um, I think it's fine. Uh, there's sort of that uh, sort of definitive edge there um, that makes sense, but uh, just in general, they are kind of small. And so, um, you know, dinky little planter boxes um, really don't amount to much, but maybe you could do something more interesting with, um, you know, when you combine them. Those are all the questions I have, Mr. Chairman. I will yield the rest of my time to Vice Chair Miller and yourself. Okay, thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Miller, any questions, comments? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, I'll keep it brief um, because we're under time constraints and I'm anxious to hear uh, uh, from um, the public, uh, both the ANC and the party in opposition, as well as any other members who've signed up. Uh, from the public as, as well as office of planning. Um, and I appreciate the comments of, uh, I appreciate the applicants uh, presentation here tonight and uh, the work that has been done thus far and uh, the continued work um, that the applicant will be doing uh, in response to uh, commission concerns um, and others concerns. Um, on the uh, if, if, uh, you, you, I think you may have addressed this in part on the design. Um, the ANC's uh, submission uh, references the uh, uh, concern about the that may that the that the the row houses that are being demolished. Uh, the two on. Uh, N Street and one on South Capitol, I guess, um, that they could have been retained as part of uh, a creative design and that uh, I think you addressed it briefly in your, uh, in your presentation as to why it isn't being, a, it, could, it couldn't be integrated into uh, that corner of South Capitol and N or, or elsewhere. Um, but if you could just briefly uh, Say why that those those ha those row houses could not have been retained um, to provide that historic uh, uh, integration and context. Uh, I guess that's for Mr. Marcus or for Ms. Wilson. So, and just to be clear, there's there's three existing row houses, uh, not not on the corner. One is at the furthest uh, South Capitol. Um, Edge away from the corner, and the other one's the furthest from the, on the N Street side. There's two on that side, and one on the South Capitol side. Um, the ones on the on the N Street side, they do line up with the property line and the facade of the building. And then on the on the South Capitol side, they, the existing row houses are are out at the property line, and we are actually set back 15 feet. Um, and we did we did uh, we tried various versions. Uh, of keeping and for a while we had the the first 15 feet of the south capitol row house in the project um and we tried versions where we were keeping some of the uh houses on the the two houses on the end street side um and some of the problems we were run into that the small footprint of this building just makes this makes this unique and it was difficult uh we, we kind of had competing um scales and i I've, I've uh I've done a lot of projects where we're integrating existing row houses with with larger buildings behind and we were just it just didn't seem to work out and some of the feedback we were getting actually from uh actually from the ANC and also from office of planning was that it was not helping uh the building um so in the end we 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 removed them what was there an actual Design that you 
conceptually developed or rendered and that that that, that you shared with um, or we had you, even the uh, sorry you didn't even get to that point no we uh, I don't know if it went to to you but we had a uh, previous version that we shared with a and C where we were keeping the uh, front 15 feet of the, the south capital side um, we had that actually for a while um, but with the more conversations that we had, it just didn't seem to be helping the project. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, I'll, I'll move on from that. For uh, well, I'm sure we'll hear more from about that from ANC. Um, but um, the uh, the lamb. This maybe this is from Mr. Lamb. I guess uh, you, your family has is still in one of the residential row houses. Is is it and 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 uh, operates the liquor store. Is, is that correct? Is that, did I hear that correctly? Yes, uh, my parents still reside in um, the 1307 South Capitol Street Row home. So there are uh, t existing tenants um, who are, I think I've read somewhere on a month to month leases that are in the other two. It's, yes, there's, uh, I have two tenants living in the end street row home right now in the month to month leases and and how many bedrooms does each of those those are two bedroom two two bedroom duplex sorry muting and unmuting improperly sorry um that's my fault are, are the existing tenants just out of curiosity are they uh, how long have they been? How long have they been there? The residential tenants. Um. Over over five years. Yeah, they since I moved out on one of the row homes, I've been rented it to the same tenant. Uh, they were the original tenant. Yeah, they've been staying there for over five years. And I, I understand from the the applicant's statement that that they're very much aware of the proposal. Do um. They have any? Um, are, are you providing them any kind of um, opportunity to return if they could afford to return? There are affordable units that are commendably part of this project that go that are that exceed the minimum square footage of uh, inclusionary zoning. You're at uh, twelve or thirteen percent of the square footage versus uh, I think eight or. Eight to ten. I can't. I don't yeah. know if it's worth. It. Yeah. If they if they qualify for the program, well, yes. I mean, I'm not going to stop them to not apply for. But um, yeah. Currently, they are um paying market rate rent, and uh, then they are in the loop of the process. And um, I I told them I would give them plenty of head start, if and when. The plans approved, and if and when the development is going to start down the road, so they will have plenty of time to relocate or think about where they're going to live next. And, and and how many people are actually living in those two row houses? Uh, two family. One, one have a daughter, one father, one daughter, and uh, one of the unit. The other unit have a single. Person living there, I think her dad just moved into with her. She's taking care of her dad right now. I think recently. Um, and uh, um, okay, I don't know how. All right, I'm not going to go into this delay going into this uh, uh, further right now. Um. Ms. Uh, Ms. Wilson, um, I think that you asked for one of the areas of flexibility was to uh, up or down the number of total units in the um, uh, in the project, and as uh, as long as you're meeting the um, I th the inclusionary zoning requirements. Uh, I just wanted to clarify what 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 is the flexibility that's being asked for on the number of units and what what commitment are you uh, uh, offering in terms of the inclusionary zoning? Are you going to keep it at the twelve to thirteen percent level, yes. which is what I would hope 
Yes. Do. Yeah. Okay. That, sorry, that wasn't meant to to get around that. <clears throat> and yeah. I, I apologize. I didn't know if you're referring to the to the to what you're offering the 12, 12 to thirteen percent, or you're going to vert. It, it was about the unit mix in case, like down the road, there is you know more of the market for an extra couple two bedroom units. We wanted to take away um, a wall or, or change the unit mix from forty nine to forty eight or. Um, 49 to 50. That was more of what we were requesting. Yeah, no, I, no, I understand that. I just wanted to make sure that the percentage of inclusionary zone uh, of units that are inclusionary zoning, yes. um, including this, the 50 percent um, yes. median income, 60 percent median family income split would be the, be the the percentages would be the same. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. We'll we'll put thank that. You. We'll update that in our next filing. Too. Okay. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Yes. Uh, and the 50% MFI is actually being, is that being, that's being triggered. You may be buffering more space than what's re statutory or what's re required under regulations, but that's being triggered because of the, pen, the penthouse, the penthouse habitable uh, residential space. Is that, am I correct? Sure. Yes. Yeah, so instead of paying the fund, we um, opted to include that in one of the units. And I think the total square footage required was 81 square feet because of the size of the um the habitable penthouse space for that one unit is is relatively small so it was just 81 square feet um so we we are exceeding that quite a bit with one of the units um which i think is i'll have to have rich you know attest to this but a one bedroom unit i think is about 600 square feet the one we're proposing um, so we do exceed exceed it quite a bit instead of paying the fee. <clears throat> okay, okay. Um, and um, the uh, the pedestrian access area off of N Street uh, to the get to the back of the building where the where the uh, Deliveries, I guess, are going to be made. Did uh, is that? Did I hear you hear say that small vans might be going down that to get there, or, or no? Did I miss? No, there won't be. There's there's no curb cuts and no vehicular access to the site, and that's and so by pedestrian. The, the no curb data. cuts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Just want to clarify that. I thought I heard something about. I guess the small vehicles are in the lo are in the loading zone. Um, so, uh, okay. Um, I appreciate uh, all of the changes that have been made in response to uh, office of planning and um, agency concerns, and including, I think, the, the clarification that it was going to be lead gold, not just lead certification, and solar on the roof, and um, um, uh, other changes and I appreciate and, and the design other design changes that have been made, even though. There's been some, some criticism here, um, and I appreciate all the balconies, uh, as the architect uh, alluded to uh, how many of the units actually and I, it, how many of the, of the of the units will have balconies. And I, although I heard the concern that commissioner may raised that some of them don't seem very usable, but, um. At this point, but, uh. How many of the units, uh, Mr. Marcus? Yeah, the, it's it's more than half. Um, the ones that's, on the back side do not. That's fine. I just want to get a ball, uh, a ball, a ballpark of sure. what's near the ballpark. Um, that's. Uh, uh, I think all my questions, Mr. Chairman. I'll have others uh, after after we hear from um, uh, OP and A and C and the party in opposition, other public members. Thank you very much. Thank you, for everybody, for your testimony. Okay, thank you. I, I want to thank everyone, but as I stated previously, um, I don't think, and I've, I've heard it, and I think Commissioner May echoed uh, some of my thoughts, and I haven't got to the design. I'm looking at letters from the ANC, and I'm looking at um, the party in opposition, as I've stated. I think this is an easy fix. Uh, when I say easy fix, I think some more conversation with both the party in opposition. And the ANC, I, th I think this is not right even for the commission. I wish I had known this when we when we set it down. Um, but I'm not going to ask a lot of questions. Uh, I think everyone knows where I come from. I'm I'm prepared to come back, and I think the ANC has alluded to that in their letter. 
Uh, so I'm also letting uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Vice Chair Kramer, as well as the party in opposition, uh, Mr. Teresa, who's their representative, know uh, where I stand. I don't know if my colleagues, I think, uh, I'm pretty sure from a design standpoint, I don't think Commissioner May is happy. So I don't I don't believe in, here's, here's what I'll say to the applicant, Ms. Wilson, here's what I'll say to you all. The, the community is going to have to, and I know Mr. Lamb, who, who let me ask, let me, let me go to Mr. Jason, Jason Lamb. Could you, um, let me, let me ask you a question. Are you, I think you said this, I know Ms. Wilson there, but you're the owner, so I'm going to ask you, uh, once this is developed, are you going to still continue to live in the neighborhood? I currently live in New York right now. Okay. And my parent is considering staying, but there will be a gap between the development time that they're going to have to live elsewhere. But the intention is we are keeping the buildings and um, for the foreseeable future. So the, the, also the other two families, and I get beat up on this, the other two families that, that are living in the units as you were having with Commissioner, Commissioner uh, Vice Chair Miller, uh, you're, you're trying to help them relocate, right? um i mean i can but you know i what do you mean help them relocate it's like you, show them where they can live yeah, yeah well are you trying to help find them somewhere in the city or what are you doing with them? i mean i don't i will the, look um look let me say this to you look let me say this to you yeah yeah i'm a good responsible confused. a good responsible developer would help okay it's easy to come in front of, I'm not getting on you, I'm just saying, you know, sometimes you gotta help people, you know, people need help. Yes. I don't even know who they are. I don't know nothing about them, but I'm just saying they need help. And I would suggest, cause you probably have the resources. I would suggest you try to help them find a place in the city. So we don't have to go through that, Mr. Lamb. I don't wanna put you on the spot because I believe that we're gonna see each other again. From my standpoint, I know this is a design review. I just have some problems with how we're here. And, and it seems like I haven't seen not one person come down other than the Africans team in support. So anyway, that's enough said. I'm trying to move through this because uh, guess what? We spent all this time. I believe we're going to have another hearing. Um, so let's um, uh, let me go to the parties uh, to the party. Um, let me go to Vice Chair Kramer. Do you have any cross examination for any of the uh, anyone you heard? Um, thank you. I, I'm going to try to not do it not address anything that we uh, just in the commission. So I just want to say a couple of questions. Mr. Kramer, I'm, I'm actually, I don't know if anybody else is, um, all, the, is anybody else having a problem here, Commissioner Kramer, or is it just me? Okay, yeah. most of it's just me. But anyway, Commissioner Grant, we have a, Why don't you turn your? Not that we we'd love to see you, but I think we did this before. Turn your camera off. <laughs> and I, I'll, right. Okay, I'll see if I can do the setting. Maybe my settings are are too low or something. I'll find that. Um, can you hear me now? Better. Yes. Oh, I see. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Um, I'll I'll also turn that. I just turned the sound up. I don't know what that helps me. That uh, helps you. I mean. Um, so I the um, because we spend a lot of time worrying about the uh, the parking and loading and and um, all, all the transportation issues in our in our concerns. Um, <clears throat> uh, I just pose a couple of questions. One of them is that if they are trying to negotiate uh, with for parking in the um, in the uh, associated uh, commercial spots, we would like to see real arrangements before we understand that that's really happening. Because as you can see, you will see in our testimony, we're concerned about um, uh, the fact that they, that we'll have cars anyway, whether we, whether we deny them parking in the building or not. Um, the um, the other the loading issue, uh, I, you someone said that I guess it was Mr. Zide that the um, you're not required to. Um, to have a different kind of loading arrangement because you, you don't require it for anything under 50 units. So that you have 49 units, you're kind of squeaking by. So I'm wondering whether you're you can readdress the uh, how you're dealing with the um, the loading. Uh, and we also would like to see something in terms of what was originally what was originally proposed uh, when you were using the I guess the the uh, the back uh, easement uh, side easement. Um, 
how you were dealing with uh, with below grade parking because there weren't there there was an arrangement um, in the for for vehicular access to the building. Um, if that we have never seen anything describing that, and if you could either say words now or save it for next time, that would be very helpful. Um, uh, uh, and I'll save the other uh, on on the. Um, on the on the uh, transportation issues, we can save till till next time. Um, on the design issues, I don't know whether you have slides that you can point us to or or narrative, but we have never seen any real description of the the brick color or the non-brick facade materials, anything that's describing really what you're doing to the facade of the building. We don't have that um, that details uh, those details. Uh, and, and need it. Commissioner Kramer. Um, yes. We're still in cross examination. So if you want oh, so to ask for those things, ask. That's what I'm at. I'm sorry. I, my my we language want, is wrong. We want them to we, ask, a, ask a question and let them respond. Thank you. Um, okay. Let me, let me go back to thank you very much. I'm not. I'm never good at this, uh, Commissioner. Right, we understand May. completely. It's <laughs> I'm good at some things, but not a cross examination. Right. Um, Very few people. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me go. Let me let me pose the the questions that I had on the on the um, on the uh, transportation issues. The first one was what 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 kinds of arrangements you we can expect to see before this is uh, goes through the next stage for um, for parking outside of this uh, this building um, so the you know we are reach we have reached out to colonial parking and um, I believe mr lamb has, has reached out to the 1319 building so securing off-site parking arrangements isn't isn't necessarily a condition of the zero parking requirement so we're, we're doing those things because we do want to if something can be arranged, but I don't know at this time that we can guarantee specific arrangements, but we are working to the best of our ability towards it. Okay, so we hope we'll see more. Um, and on the below grade parking, is there something, uh, uh, I'm sorry, below grade vehicular entrance, is there something that we can look at or that is in the slide someplace, any place that we can see what in fact was arranged before and what might be able to be looked at again in terms of vehicular entrance to the building? So the the only the only potential, as we said before, is the access from N Street is not obtainable because we could not ramp into the building to get down to below grade. The the access from the rear, um, I don't know that we have something. We we could prepare something. We may have something archived that would have to be updated for new building. But the only way to even get in from the rear of the building was going to be through a vehicle elevator to a very small number of spaces, given how small the building footprint is. If that makes sense, so. Well, I guess we're still confused about it. So whatever you can prepare or provide for us next time would be very helpful because we have not, we don't have any information to be able to uh, suggest how how this could be revisited. That would be very helpful. Yeah, we did have in the original schemes that we presented today and see we had parking that was accessed from the easement. It came because the vehicles came down the easement and went into a car elevator and down into parking. Um, and there was a limited number of spaces, like Will was saying, because of the footprint of the building. But in the discussions later with the neighbors that didn't want the uh, vehicles on that easement, that's when that got cut. Um, so there's no, at this point, with no vehicle access to the lot then there's no possibility of having parking. So there's only so, only for this for this lot, there's only two different ways to get on there. If you had an alley in the back, we, we don't have access to any public alley. So there's just this private easement. And that was uh, discussed with neighbors about not having uh, vehicles enter from that area. So that cut out that that mm -hmm. access. And then the two existing curb cuts, there are existing curb cuts, but because this is a new building, DDOT treats this as a new structure and is not going to allow curb cuts to the to the lot even though there's some there now so both of those are getting closed and therefore there's no direct vehicle access to the property so we can't you can't 
park or, or have loading on the property. So let me ask the, the, this question again. If you, um, uh, leaving aside the, the, the D dot um, uh, proclivity for not, not, acquire, not requiring new curb cuts, the side, the, um, what you're calling the bath, I can't remember the, the terminology, but the, th the, the, the end street alley, the end street, which is, which is wider than the easement from the drawings. Is that correct? That's the, you're talking about the rear yard of the building. The rear yard, I guess, the rear yard. Is that, that's considerably wider than the easement alley. It's 15 feet. I believe the easement is 12. Right. Right. Okay. So, um, and apart from the D dots not wanting to offer you a curb cut, that is in fact an, an, uh, by, by its size of a, um, a possible, uh, vehicular, um, so previous, the previous version that we had, when we had the car access from the back with the elevator, mm -hmm. we also did have a curb cut and going directly to that rear yard space. Right. And we had that as a loading area. Right. That's, that's what, that's what I want to clarify that because we can, we can deal with that. We can we can deal with that further. That's very helpful. Um, but, okay. But just to be clear, I mean, we had to cut that but, because we, there's no without a curb cut, you can't get there. Of course, I understand, I understand that piece of it. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, I I've already asked you if you can either now or or in further um, information, give provide more information on the facade. We have no information on the colors, on where the colors came from for the brick, uh, where the what the other materials are that you're going to use in the thing that appears to be gray. Um, so we have no what I'm what I'm trying to um, ask you about is what kind of information you can provide for us so we can understand uh, our concern about how how this design um uh relates to the um the uh, area around both old southwest and also what was done in 1319 which was which was um uh, uh, deliberately more sensitive to to uh resonating the building with with what was around it so that's all about facade materials that really if I could emphasize that too, I mean, I think typically we see a sample board of some sort, but I don't recall whether we got anything in the record. I'm mean, going to see some some images of brick and colors, but actual, you know, a photograph of a sample board. Isn't that what we usually get on a? Yes, thank you. That was a design what, yes. review. We can provide more information on that. We have that one page which shows some some brick and some metal. It doesn't. It, we can provide more information on that. Sure, that would be very helpful. Um, the, the the last um couple of questions have to do with the sort of how things are going to operate, um, uh, in uh, internally. Um, you're um, I'm. We were wondering what happens to the liquor store. We asked this question in in one of our conversations. We never got an answer. What happens to the liquor store? It's a two part question. What happens to the liquor store in the interim while during construction? And then are you planning? Is there a business plan to come back to this liquor store or some other kind of facility? We, that we would like to know what that, uh, how that will operate. Um, and I'll just throw these out together and then you can deal with them. Um, the, um, also the, uh, this is in terms of the ra racial equity, addressing the racial equity, um, uh mandates that are now are now in front of all of us how are you going to deal with the employment and business opportunities that may be create will be created by this project uh and in terms of you did allude to this in what you would in your presentation that there um it's several times that you want to uh be sure that that uh, anc60 has access or um can use the, the the rooftop facilities that's very we, we like to hear things like that but we'd like specifically how are you going to make this amenity relate to both the tenants of the building and the community how that will be used so um also last thing was just a small thing is the iz units appear to be it's a small building so maybe this is necessary uh, as a necessary um outcome but 
appeared to be not scattered through the building, but kind of in a tier. And and we you know we always want to see the IZ units indistinguishable, and so they they they're randomly scattered throughout the building. I guess I can jump in and sort of try to sure. organize all of this question. So, um, for the first one, in terms of the uh, liquor store, I'm going to have Jason answer that. Jason, where is the liquor store going to be in the interim? And then, um, can you talk about what's going to happen after construction? Yes. Um, ideally, we will find a relocated location, uh, new location for the interim of the construction period. Now, we haven't really reached out to the a ABC board and, and asked them what the actual process that is. Is it simply just moving one location to another? Do we have to require, uh, 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 ask for a new permitting? Mm -hmm. And what happened when we come back to the place is another permitting process. Uh, we haven't reached out to the ABC board about that yet. Um, another option is that we simply just not going to operate the liquor store during the construction and then, and then it will come back to that new space. Again, we're going to have to ask the ABC board or how, how the permitting that's going to work. Will, will we have to go to a hearing? Oh, or what, yeah, what that's so awesome. Thank you. You. And then, um, in terms of the other questions, um, those are things that we are happy to continue to work with you on. Um, we did send a couple times a good neighbor agreement uh, to the ANC, and we'd be happy to talk more about specific job opportunities um, for local community members. And then um, also discuss the use of the communal area on the rooftop. I know that in another project, um, we, we had some pretty, had something detailed in the good neighbor agreement about how that would work, how that would be rented out, whether or not the, um, the residents of that particular ANC would get a discount to rent out that space and for what percentage of time, um, and how that would work for the residents. So we're, uh, we offer that as a response to, I think, a DPR comment and um, are happy to continue to work right. with you on that. Okay, Commissioner Ka Hamilton is here with me and she's asked also, um, I, I'm gonna deal with that in the testimony, but she's asked also about whether you have a response at this point to the uh, to the green space issue. We will, we will press for a different kind of uh, use of the um, expansion of the green space in front of the buildings, but if you'd like to address that now. I, I would just say, um, I know there's been some comments on that and we're continually looking at that in the relationship to the building, but there's also some very specific um, requirements from uh, public space on that to, uh, we started in a different direction on that. We have very distinct areas that we were defining um, in front of the building, but they, they have very, um, clear ideas on what they call the privatization of public space. Um, so um, we can talk a lot about it, but we also have to, have to adhere to those, those criteria. Okay. Um, I think what I should do is save the other, in the interest of time to save uh, several of the issues will come up as I testify. So maybe that's the, that's the best way to handle this. Do it then. Hey, thank you, uh, Vice Chair Kramer. I, I misspoke when I said the sit down, but I do want my colleagues, and, and I'm asking Ms. Sean to remind me that I do want to have a discussion about these cases being a set down. I, I can't remember why we don't do it, but obviously, this is an example of why we should. So, um, so I, I don't think this was not a set down because I, I look back, this is a CG. Uh, so, anyway, we can have that discussion later. And that probably would have condense some of this hearing to maybe a little more than an hour as opposed to where we are here. Uh, but either way, I think it's uh, more efficient, but let's let's have that conversation. All right, so Michelle, I think I'll go to the office, um, the ANC, let me see, let's go to the office of, oh no, cross-examination, uh, Mr. Teresa, do you have any cross? I, I, I do, I would like to cross-examine the architect 
Um, so I, I guess I'll just start with my questions. Um, the lot 827 street lot line, um, is that the same distance um, as lot 68 and 69 um, from South Capitol Street? Um, I'm not sure your question. So I, I, I thought I heard you in your testimony say that lot 827 um, was the same, was set back the same distance from South Capitol Street at lot 68 and 69. Is that correct? No, no. So the uh, along South Capitol, I, I think I, I can answer. Uh, along South Capitol Street, uh, the entire distance um, it, within the Capitol Gateway zone where we're the, the requirements. Let me, let, me interrupt. let me interrupt. Why don't we put that up, Mr. Young? Uh, Mr. Torres, I'm not trying to take over your presentation, your cross examiner, yeah, sure. but I think. That way we can all see what you're talking about as opposed to doing it like this. Um, yeah, sure. Then, we bring that up. Great. That would be better. Thank you. If you could go to uh, uh, previous, I'm not sure the number, but it's it's about three or four slides backwards to the first floor plan. Yeah. Um, and I. So, uh, not sure how I can draw again on here, but um, the, the if you look at the the South Capitol side, the shaded, the gray shaded buildings at the top, those are existing row houses, and the face of that coming down uh, to our lot is the property line, and our building is set back 15 feet from that property line. That's the requirement in the in the capital gateway zone, but on the end street side, the face of the building is directly on the property line. So there is no everything you see in front uh, of our building on the end street side is actually public space. But part of what you see the first 15 feet in front of our building on the south capital side is actually private property. But because it's a required setback, it's still governed by public space. So we have to follow public space requirements and they review it. Um, but it's actually private property. Does that, does that answer your question? So the space in front of where the building starts at 827 is your property, is, is part of 820, lot 827. Correct. The 15 feet. Yep. Right, and, and and that aligns with uh, lot 68 and 69. Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, are you familiar with the plat submitted by uh, the applicant for this application? Yeah. Um, the plat that, that we submitted? Yes. Um, so so you, you are familiar. In that plat, uh, how many feet east from the street lot line does lot 827 go? The total lot? Yeah, yeah, from from uh, the the street lot line, uh, which, you know, is yeah. right next to 68 and it's all lined up. Uh, how far east does it go? Yeah, I can't answer that off the top of my head. According, sorry. according to the plat. Um, yeah, I, sorry, I can't answer it off the top of my head. I'd have to get that in front of me. Um, well, okay. Uh, but is, is it? Is there a reason? Are you asking a question for a reason? Maybe I could address the, the reason. Well, it appears that in the plat um, that it goes 73 feet east. Uh, and that's what was submitted. That's what's in the okay. record. That when you look at the plat, uh, okay. the, the, yeah, it goes 73 feet east. Uh, are you aware with um, how far east uh, lot 69 goes from the street lot line? It's it's less, yeah. Well, so actually, I don't think so. I think it may be the same, but the with the easement in the back, um, which is uh, part of the adjacent property because it's a private easement. Um. um so, oh, go ahead. Um. No, I just is there a. Is there a specific question? Maybe I could just address the question without, without having that in front well, of me. That, that was the question. If you were aware how far east 
uh, lot 68 goes from the uh, street lot line um, for for the, the the east part of the property or, or for yeah for the east part of the property correct um, but but you don't know um, off, off the top of my head no okay um, how far how many feet east is the east court wall from the street lot line? Yeah, you're gonna keep asking me the questions. I, I have to get it in front of me. But what? What? So we we have. I, I believe that the lots line up with the back of the court, and the other adjacent lots line up with that. And we have the court set back. Uh, so our building is set back from the edge of the property line. Uh, uh, I believe that that's 15 feet there. As we're talking, I'm gonna try and bring it up on my. Uh, so I can answer these questions better. Um, well, I, I mean, if you, if you could pull it up, cause I, really none of my questions have been answered. I mean, it's all part of the record. It's all, uh, stuff that's been submitted. Um, I mean, I, I guess I could sure. put it into my testimony, um, and, and, and present it that way. Um, but, but I, I don't understand. Is there a, do you have a, a specific question that you're getting to? Well, well, what's happening here is that 68, lot 68 and 69 have the same distance from South Capitol Street as lot 827. Uh, lot 827, according to your plat, goes 73 feet east. Um, lot 68 and 69 goes 70 feet east. But when you look at your drawings, um, it doesn't appear that that's the case. It looks like 827 is much further east than lot 68 and 69, much more than okay. three feet. Um, and it looks like uh, the it looks like the rear part of it is actually in lot 70. So maybe this isn't the drawing to show, but um, this drawing doesn't show the property lines of the adjacent buildings. Um, so there, if you, uh, if you can go back a couple of slides, I think we might have a drawing that shows it better. Right. Um, this isn't, uh, I'm not sure if this is showing in either. That's not really showing the actual property lines. I, I think we would need the plat. If you can maybe keep going, there was a, um, before the photos, it's one of the first images, maybe the second one. Here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's not the plat that, but you could see it's very small distance, but in the plat, it actually has the, the plat that was submitted uh, at, sure. as, as part of the application that, that was requirement of the design review. Um, it, it clearly says that it goes 73 feet east, um, sure. but it looks like it, it in, in the other architectural drawings, it looks like it goes much further than 73 feet. Mr. Teresa, can I interrupt for just a second? Uh -huh. I'm trying to understand the point of your questioning because um, the applicant isn't really responsible for documenting other people's property in this case. Um, well, so can you just explain why this is relevant to the consideration of the case? Because if it's like a drafting error having to do with somebody else's property, I'm not sure it's relevant. Well, the design review application is does not include lot 70. Um, so if 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 the project includes lot 70 in its calculations, then it doesn't meet the design review requirement because lot 70 is not included in it. And so they're, they're claiming property that does not belong to them. And it's, it's very difficult for my clients uh, to understand the, the, the project that's actually happening. Uh, and the regulation that I, I guess that would pertain to would be uh, Title 11, uh, Section Z 301.1N, where it says that the, the the plans do not readily provide do not readily provide the information necessary to understand the project. 
Uh, my clients are right next door uh, to the project and they don't know where it begins and ends. Um, they know that the lot next door to them goes 73 feet and they know that their lot goes 70 feet. But from all of the drawings and the things that we've seen, it seems like it goes much further east from the street lot line than just. Yeah, I, I think I can answer. I mean, we could provide we're we're designing. We're not we're not taking somebody else's property. So we're designing within our property. And I think the issue is that we're not showing the adjacent properties. Uh, property lines in the in the proper way for you to understand it. So we could provide something for you to direct. I mean, we can we can do that. That that would be helpful, and and that would be all of my questions yeah. for you. Then, um, I have sure. other questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, and, and I don't. I'm not sure who these would be directed to. Um, and, and I guess maybe once I start asking them, uh, that the appropriate person will respond. Um. But will residents have direct access to the north south easement? So, yeah, so. Right, right now, now we do have a so there, there was we, we started out with vehicular access, so that's that's been removed. So right now, um. Uh, we do have pedestrian access to the easement. Okay. Um, is there any plan to maintain the easement um, for the the use that uh, a lot of residents will be using it compared to uh, the neighbors? Uh, who yes. Are just like it's it's actually people? just to be just to be clear. So it's not intended to be. It's just intended to be a uh, emergency exit. So only if there was an emergency, that's when people would would use it. That's the intention. It's not intended to that people would enter the building from that side. Um, uh, that's that's where it was. Also, um, if I may, can, can that be stipulated? If, yes. Also, if I may add, the uh, easement is owned by thirteen nineteen, the last seventy. And um, in our good neighbor agreement is agreed upon of by them that they will be the sole person maintaining the easement. So um, I don't know if that can help you answering your question. Is there a lien holder consent on that easement? I not. I don't know if any of us qual are qualified here to answer that particular question. Not sure of the answer. Okay, well, well, we have no more questions. Okay, thank you. Um, let's go to the office of planning. Mr. Lawson. There we go. We'll see if my video works. Um, is my audio working okay? I'm good. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is Joel Lawson uh, with the Office of Planning. I'll be attempting to fill in for Matt Jessick, who is the uh, who has been the project manager for this case. Uh, OP remains supportive of a proposal to activate and provide new housing on this uh, visually important site. However, we've certainly heard what the commission has talked about tonight, and we agree with the commission that additional attention to the application. And the design of the building is needed to make sure that it adequately addresses the right the criteria and the intent for this zone and this monumental street. Um, we appreciate the applicant stating a willingness to continue to work with OP as well as with the ANC and the neighbors uh, to refine the design and the proposal. And we'd be happy to continue those discussions. We'd appreciate that opportunity. Uh, and that would, of course, include discussions on how to incorporate some of the comments raised by. Uh, the commission at the hearing tonight. Um, with regards to the ANC concern about the dispersion of the IZ units throughout the building, uh, we also noted that um, in our review of the most recent filings, uh, and we're not we're also not quite sure it meets the intent of the regulations. But again, we'd be happy to work with the applicant, probably pulling in DHCD uh, to make sure that that uh, that that provision is adequately met. Um, in the interest of time. Um, because we know that this is going to be coming back to you uh, again as a revised proposal. 
Uh, I'm happy to leave it at that, uh, but be available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lawson. Let's see if we have any questions. Um, Mr. May. Yeah, um, just a quick one. I mean, there was a long list of uh, unresolved issues that were in the report. Um, and I know that the applicant attempted to respond to all those and some of those are kind of straightforward. You know, you haven't provided the, you know, the lead scorecard, they provided lead score, whatever. But I mean, of the, of those issues, do you feel like they have satisfactorily addressed them? Um, beyond sort of the design concern. Um, beyond the design concern, I think. Mr. Lawson, we lost your, we lost you. Can't hear you. Or at least I lost you. Um, we all lost. Him. Is that oh, better? There you go. Is that better? Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, uh, we did have a list of nine issues in our report that required additional review. The applicant has, uh, for the most part, addressed uh, those uh, those nine, with a couple of exceptions. Um, but, you know, like I said, we've already noted that we think that additional attention to the meeting the comments of the urban design division is needed. Uh, we're happy to pull in the uh, urban design division to continue those discussions with the applicant and make sure that they're adequately addressed. Uh, some of those concerns were related to the building and some of them were more public space, uh, which is more the purview of the public space committee. Um, but uh, we're happy to, uh, like I said, continue those discussions to work them out. Um, I already noted that we still have a few questions about the location of the IZ units. Um, they have committed to a lead gold building. Uh, and so that addresses that issue. Uh, they're showing solar panels on the roof, but we agree with the commission that having a bit more uh, certainty around uh, those uh, solar panels, the amount of solar panels where they be located would be helpful. Uh, they have provided additional renderings, although we're anticipating uh, some new renderings with the, uh, with the next go round. Um, uh, and I, I think that's about it. Generally, they responded to the to the issue, with the exception of design. Okay, thank you. I appreciate your recap. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner, uh, even more, you have any uh, questions or comments? In the interest of time, Mr. Chairman, I do not. Okay, thank you. Um, Vice Chair Miller. Uh, no questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lawson, uh, for your uh, for the Office of Planning's re report. Thank you. Only thing I would ask, uh, thank you, uh, Vice Chair. Only thing I would ask, Mr. Lawson, that we need to revisit whether or not this needs to, there needs to be a set down. Um, I'm not going to ask you to answer it now, <laughs> but I think we need to revisit because this again, I think there are some things that we could have dealt with that as opposed to the hearing. All right, um, let's go to Vice uh, Vice Chair uh, Kramer. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't, um, not connected. Um, uh, thank you. Good evening. Um, I am Frederica Kramer, as you know, uh, Commissioner for ANC 6005 and Vice Chair of ANC 60, and I'm testifying on behalf of uh, ANC 60. I've also been on the negotiating committee on this case with Commissioner Rhonda Hamilton, who, who's in whose SMD it, it lies. Uh, uh, Ms. And, uh, Ms. Uh, Vice yeah. Chair Kramer. Uh, we're actually asking questions at the Office of Planning, so if you can... Oh, sorry. I'm so okay. sorry. Okay. <laughs> I had it cut off. Uh, no, I have no questions. questions. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Teresa, you have any questions? Of uh, course. Not, for the, not for the Office of Planning. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's go to... Um, let's go now, uh, <laughs> Vice Chair Kramer. We're going to come to your no, report. D-Dot. D-Dot. <laughs> Oh, D-Dot, oh, no. D-Dot, you'll report. see Bridges no, first. Okay, Ms. Bridges, thank you, Michelle. Ms. Bridges, let me, let me ask you this, Ms. Bridges. Uh, let me ask you a question. I noticed yesterday on the BZA, you seem to like them quite a bit. Do you like us as much as you like the BZA? That's a Ooh, joke. That's a tough one. That's a, yeah, no, that's a joke. You may go ahead, Ms. Bridges. <laughs> thank you. Um, good evening, Chairman Hood and members of the commission. For the record, I'm Kelsey Bridges, a transportation planner with the District Department of Transportation. 
um, filling in for uh, Aaron Zimmerman, who uh, drafted and submitted the report. DDOT is supportive of the applicant's proposal for 1301 South Capitol Street Southwest. In our April 8, 2022 report, we recommended approval with two conditions, implementation of a TDM plan and a loading management plan. The applicant has agreed to both of these conditions and has uploaded updated versions based on the requested revisions in our report. This document is Exhibit 27D in the case record. With the revised TDM plan and loading management plan included in the final zoning order, DDOT has no objection to the approval of this design review application. Thank you. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Ms. Bridges. Uh, let's see if we have any questions. Uh, Commissioner May? Nothing. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Dr. Even more. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no questions. Just want to thank Ms. Bridges uh, as well as Mr. Lawson for standing in for both of your colleagues tonight. Appreciate that. Okay, and uh, Vice Chair Miller. No, thank you for your report. I have no questions uh, this time. I think we'll see each other again. Um, let's, let's see. Um, uh, um, Vice Chair Kramer, you have any questions of DDOT? No, thank you. And Mr. Teresa, you have any questions of DDOT? No. Okay. All right. Thank you. So now, uh, thank you, Ms. Bridges. We appreciate it. Now, uh, Vice Chair Crane, I think we can go to you now. I think that's we're in line. So, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll get myself together. It's okay. Thank you. Uh, um, as I said um, earlier, for the record, I am Frederica Kramer, Commissioner of ANC 6005, Vice Chair of ANC 60, testifying on behalf of ANC 60. Uh, and I've also been on the negotiating committee with Commissioner Hamilton, uh, who's, as I said earlier, uh, is here as well to answer questions. You've already received the report uh, from the ANC 60 uh, in which we opposed the current application. I'll attempt to, um, to highlight uh, the most salient points. The project is a relatively small building, a very small foot, uh, footprint in comparison to the many projects that ANC 60 has been called upon to review as Southwest uh, redevelops, but it's a, on a very important corner uh, on South Cap and North uh, and N Street uh, Southwest, and therefore both part of the Capitol Gateway overlay and an entrance to Old Southwest. To put this the site in some context and ANC's thoughts in some context, position in some context, Commissioner Hamilton worked for several years with the developers of 1319 South Capitol Street, the property which will actually surround 1301. That long negotiation produced one of the most significant outcomes we've seen in our community, a building whose color and fine details reiterate key attributes of Old Southwest, and one that will also preserve and renovate four of the, old, of the oldest row houses in Old Southwest for family-sized affordable units. The project will now echo the history of Black working class Old Southwest and allow residents in those four row houses to connect and access the amenities in the new high-rise behind them. Two row houses on South Capitol Street that the developer owns will also be preserved, and the footprint of houses that will be raised in the 1319 project will be curated so that Old Southwest will be memorialized in the new development. ANC 60 hoped a similar dialogue might produce a similarly sensitive product for 1301, uh, the product, the proposal you have before you, but the applicant and the applicant was periodically involved because their properties, as you've heard uh, this evening, um, are about the um, uh, 1319. Instead, the ANC finds some basic concerns about 1301 that result in our opposition. Principal among them is the plan for parking and traffic management. It we think won't work. The current proposal proposes what ANC fears will be unworkable arrangements for loading and unloading and for expected automobile parking in and near the building. The original plan for access to the building was to use the alley easement, as we've heard uh, earlier, um, behind the South Capitol Street row homes and included limited below grade parking. That plan was dropped after objections from the neighboring uh, owners 
and ANC requested but never received a detailed description of how below grade vehicle access would have been achieved, could have been achieved, and in turn options for access from the front or side alleys um, um, are unworkable. We find the substitute plan unrealistic and inadequate to the demands of the neighborhood and the limitations of N Street. The applicant plans to eliminate all on street parking, as we've heard, in front using the three space curbside section for Pudo ride share and similar short term parking and an adjoining 50 foot length for truck loading and unloading and residential and commercial trash pickup. Commercial trash from two ground floor businesses and second floor offices and residential trash will be transported by foot from the center of the building as they estimate about 120 feet and down the, the side alley to the street. Trash pickup from a planned restaurant, the liquor store, offices, and 49 apart apartments would likely be daily or close to it, creating a nuisance to the adjoining residents who would listen to incessant dumpsters rattling down the alley. The side, side, uh, the back, I, I can't remember the, what it's called, the back uh, space, from the back of the building to the street. All other commercial delivery and move in and move outs with only access by foot to the center rear entrance would be in addition to that. The applicant claims this is common in other buildings of this size, perhaps in old buildings, but this is new construction and should aim for the most appropriate accommodation. Vehicular accommodations in the front of the building are a larger issue. N Street is a very narrow street. Should current DDOT proposals allow left-hand turns from South Capitol Street into N Street, which ANC is separately opposing, the situation I'm about to describe would be disastrous. The single-use loading zone in the front and the space for the Pudos and Uber Eats and whatever other kinds of deliveries is bound to be inadequate, more, more realistically winding up in constant double parking, as we have seen all over Southwest and the Wharf. If the Pudo spaces are not occupied, they'll likely become parking spaces, as we've also seen in all the other on-street parking used by visitors to events at the Nats and Audi Field and other spillover from the Navy Yard in Southwest, or by nearby neighbors who have been pushed out of their own on-street parking by the same forces. The loading zone poses its own problems. The applicants claim that this will all be handled by a loading dock manager was not persuasive to the ANC. This is a small building likely to have minimal staff. ANC 60 asked for details on building management that might support the expectation that one loading zone could be adequately both scheduled and monitored to ensure that this also would not interfere with N Street uh, through traffic. We have not seen that. There is an existing curb cut, as you've seen on N Street, that might have led to either a half ramp for truck loading or entry to below grade parking, as was originally proposed. This option has not been described in drawing or narrative so that ANC 16 might understand what has been explored and what might be further explored to address the problems. This is why I raised the question earlier in the uh, exchange tonight. As currently proposed, our commission will have trouble supporting the removal of the existing curb cut without a full explore, exploration of the alternatives, including perhaps even renegotiating the rear easement for limited and explicit use. The front entrance can be moved to accommodate a front loading area using the existing curb cut. Let me say a further word on parking. The applicant expects to satisfy some off street parking and remote garages we find that that proposal is not realistic. New tenants in one and two bedroom apartments are likely, unlike those in smaller units, to be multi-person households. The applicants propose to rely on rental spaces. We've heard tonight, not in the Nationals par uh, uh, garage, but in other nearby garages, but has provided no evidence so far that those arrangements are forthcoming, nor for how many spaces and at what price. Nor are there any firm plans to, uh, to provide parking for patrons of the retail spaces, the new retail spaces, or staff of the commercial offices, or to accommodate the needs of resident with, residents with mobility issues. ANC 60's concern is based on what has already occurred in other projects. Residents move into new high-rise buildings with cars and proceed to take up street parking, even though they don't have zone stickers. 
Nearby residential streets will inevitably, inevitably be used by tenants of 1301, increasing competition for parking in the neighborhood on top of the competition from stadium patrons, uh, patrons on events days at Nats Park and Audi Field. Our commission would like to see a detailed analysis of, analysis of realistic parking options before the proposal is, is approved. Other facets of the proposed design raise separate concerns. The design does not embrace the character of the neighborhood, blend or complement the historic garden style apartments or homes, and in the end, add to our rapidly growing but still unique neighborhood. As I noted at the outset, we hope that this prominent corner would both honor its role in the Capitol Gateway and reference and provide an invitation into Southwest. The west side of South Capitol Street at this point south is predominantly residential and will remain so for the foreseeable future, even as it conforms to the dictates of the Capitol Gateway overlay. Our commission hoped to work with the applicant as Commissioner Hamilton had for 1319 to create a product that fulfilled both objectives. Unfortunately, no meaningful reference to the historical context of Old Southwest is evident in this current design, nor does the building reflect its relationship to the Grand Boulevard that is to become the gateway to the nation's capital. We recommended that the applicant explore the case filings for 1319 next door, not to mimic that project, but to consider how 1301 would or could relate to the large building that will essentially surround it and to better complement both its location and historical context. Based on comments from the ANC, the applicant did remove several cur curved archways on the lower levels that had no historical reference, but they added the bays that are currently there to the ground second floor, um, which may reflect Capitol Hill, but have also no relationship to the architecture uh, of Old Southwest. The structure above the base brick, uh, brick facade is at best unremarkable. Apparently, a, a, a OP agrees, and we, we've heard that other commissioners uh, on, the, on the Zoning Commission have um, some questions as well. We also note at, that there are currently 12 row, row homes that surround the corner property. As mentioned, four of the oldest houses in Southwest are being preserved as single family homes on N Street as part of the 1319 project, and four on South Capitol will also remain two are owned by 1319 and two are independently owned. The applicant proposes to raise the two on N Street and one on uh, South Capitol Street. We've heard in the colloquy tonight that the, um, there's concern about the relocation of those families. The whole discussion of that suggests that we can go back and revisit how those houses may be able to be integrated into the project in a more creative way than we've seen so far. Uh, our commission suggested the applicant explore the possibility of retaining those three row homes and, and that surround the corner, creating a prominent and unique design with historic reference, and one that would, in fact, this is important, not impede any options for the interior layout needed to preserve the proposed commercial functions. There's no evidence in the application or in our discussions that the applicant has fully considered more creative design options to serve the building's function and its unique uh, location. On a related note, uh, and something that's been discussed this evening, the building set back 15 feet is required and the applicant added these uh, some, some uh, boxes and plantings uh, in this public space, which enhances the street, streetscape. We appreciate this, the sentiment of adding, adding that interest, but our commission suggested that the softscape be increased and aligned with the landscaping fronting the row homes on either side, which would greatly contribute to the integration of the project uh, with the neighboring row homes. The planting is, as they are now, really do little to nothing to make either a public space um, more usable or more green space more appreciated. Similarly, we suggested that the neighborhood does not need another eatery as currently proposed and that few uh, Southeast visitors are likely to cross busy South Capitol Street when they have so many options uh, in Navy Yard. And if the eatery is not the final use of that ground space, then the 15 feet setback might be um, certainly better developed as true green space to soften and make prominent the, this important corner. Uh, in the end, the design that is currently offered is a loss to the preservation of, a, of an historic crossroad and a missed opportunity 
to create an important entrance to Old Southwest and a synergy with its surrounding development. ANC requested in its report that the applicant meet with the officials of 1319 and report on results and options considered before receiving a, a, approval. We reiterate that request. Um, we also appreciate the what appears to be the what will be the direction of the um, of the zoning commission to meet and work out uh, have much, many more discussions um, and work out the the issues that we've talked about. As Commissioner Hamilton would assess, a little uh, test a little more time, not years, not even months, would undoubtedly result in a first class project. And we hope that the applicant and the zoning commission uh, will take advantage of that offer as we hear that it, that they may. Thank you very much. And I'm available for questions. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Kramer. Let's see if we have any follow-up questions. Uh, Commissioner May? Yeah, I mean, this is more of a comment than a question, um, but it may lead to a response, I don't know. Um, so in considering the, the testimony and the concerns that you've been raising about parking and such, um, and the use, you know, things like whether it's an eatery and, and things like that. I mean, there are there are some elements of what you are concerned about that do relate to the design criteria that we must consider in a case like this. But there are some that do not, and they I know that they're important to the ANC, and there's certainly things that the ANC should be considering. Um and, and should be raising with the developer because you can you can ask them to do anything you know uh, anything you want and if they you know can accommodate you and that that gets your support then that's great but for our decision making the the concerns that you raise really need to relate to those specific criteria and so when you talk about something like um, the the trash handling right. I mean, whether it's five days a week that they're going to be hauling trash out or seven or two, um, I know that rolling trash bins going down the alley next to a house is loud and unpleasant. And uh, my house is on an alley. So, you know, two days a week, I get that parade of people because the rest of the alley is inaccessible. So many, many people have to roll their cans right by my house. So we hear that all the time, and I wouldn't want to do that every day. Um, or even, well, I don't even like what I have to put up with now. And that is one of the criteria is the impact of building operations on the surrounding residential area. So that relates to one of the criteria. And and by the way, I think the applicant should take notice of the fact that I'm concerned about that, that that, that particular thing resonates with me. Um, but I think that in your discussion and when you come back next time around, it would be most helpful to relate the concerns that you have to the specific criteria that we are evaluating against. And I mean, I would note that, you know, the fact that there is not specific, you know, there is no requirement for parking in this zone. I mean, that's kind of a given. So it's not to say that there aren't impacts associated with that that wouldn't relate to some of the criteria, but I think that you have to draw that connection because we won't necessarily draw that. So. I, I don't know. Can I, just, Can I give you an opportunity? So, I mean, I, 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 I hear you, and and it's a it's an important instruction to us. So I appreciate that. Um, I I would say the way I think about it is that it relates to the 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 hauling the stuff down the trash alley, if you will. Yeah. Is is it derives from from the question of whether there's a different design um, opportunity. Yeah. And and so that's that's the criteria. It's not so much. I mean, and, and to the extent that you that the criteria include uh, effects on the neighbors, um, we're sort of we're OK, we're safe to, to make the comment. But in fact, it's a much larger issue, which is why how we wound up this this uh, way in the first place. Yeah. And we have not had any we have not had a what I would consider a reasonable and robust or adequate discussion with the applicant to figure out what exactly is it, where exactly we have opportunities to to, to um, design the the um, the the loading and collection or the commercial functions properly so that you wouldn't have this byproduct right right yeah well like I said that that's one that does relate specifically to one of the criteria that we have to look at 
Okay. Uh, if you have other, other sorry. concerns, if you can just sort of tie them to what we are supposed to be considering. Okay. If, if you want to offer me any specifics more than you've said, that's no, no, no. very it's, appreciated, but that's fine. We'll, we'll do our homework. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at the regulations, but look at the office of planning's report as well, because they that's, go through it okay. step by step on all those requirements. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's it for me, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner even more. Uh, no comments. Vice Chair Miller. Uh, no questions. Thank you, Vice Chair uh, Kramer, for your uh, comments and uh, your continuing work on this project. I thank you too, uh, Commissioner Kramer. Uh, but I, I appreciate the comments of my colleague, Commissioner May. And let's see how you tie those together when you come back. And and I would employ um, the applicant to work very closely with the A and C. Uh, with uh, Commissioner Kramer and all those commissioners, um, and let's see what we if we get much closer than where we are, especially if we tie it to the regulations. Uh, any follow up? Okay, not seeing any. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Kramer. Let's go to um, Mr. Teresa. Do you have any your presentation? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sorry. Uh, let's do cross um, of, of Vice Chair. Kramer, um, Ms. Willis, do you have any questions? Uh, no, thank you. And we look forward to continuing our discussions with the ANC. <clears throat> Sounds good. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. And I appreciate your opening comments too, Ms. Wilson. Your opening comments uh, went a long way with me. Okay, uh, Mr. Teresa. Yes, sir. Um, anything to add? Is, is that what you asked? I, I couldn't hear. Oh, that's right. You know what? I, you got to do cross, and then we're going to go to your presentation. Do you have cross of uh, Ms. Kramer? Um, no, we, we've asked our questions. Okay, so we're ready for your presentation. That's what happens when I go over the top of my head sometimes. Okay. Um, well, basically, uh, we've kind of expressed our concerns. Our concerns is that... Um, I'm sorry, Chairman Hood, we need to do... Uh, they are in opposition. So, before we get to his presentation, we need to take individuals in support. Okay, I, 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 I should not have assumed. Thank you. Uh, do we have anyone here who's here in support of this application? I do have people on the list. I don't know if they're here. Um, I have, uh, she may be actually with um, the ANC uh, Vice Chair Alexandria Appa. Well, she was no, with Ms. Kramer. She's in support. Uh, she's not oh, with no, she, She's not she's with them. Not the only, with person, no, only person no. that's with them is Commissioner Hamilton. Correct. Okay. And uh other I just we just needed to call. Other than that, um everyone else is covered and there are no individuals in opposition. So uh Mr. Teresa will be um, the last one. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm glad we did that. We needed to go through that. All right. Sorry about that, Mr. Teresa. You may go begin. Okay. So I'm just going to read in, um, you know, uh, something I tried to submit earlier today. It was it was it was late to submit. Um, and, and if you would uh, allow me to submit this afterward, uh, I've been working on a, a, a petition challenge in an election that it didn't allow me to get to this 24 hours before. Um, but if you would let me submit this, and I'm just going to read it into the record right now. Um, so before you before you do that, let's do this. Um, you have something you want to submit. Um, I would I, I would, um, would would be willing to include that in the record. I actually would like to have it for you read it, but if you go ahead and read it, because I like to study, I may have questions. Okay. <laughs> but go ahead and read it. Okay. And then we might we'll wrap right. our questions in. Um, the LAM application does not meet design review requirements because their architectural drawings do not match their plat. Uh, 11Z DCMR 301.1 states the following. The applicant for a design review application shall furnish 10 copies of architectural plans and two copies of all other information required by the form at the time of filing the application, including the following. A map showing the location of the proposed project 
the existing zoning for the subject site and the zoning of adjacent properties, uh, a detailed site plan showing the location and external dimensions of all buildings and structures, utilities and other easements, walkways, driveways, plazas, arcades, and any other open spaces, and any other information needed to understand the proposed project. In the matter at hand, the plat submitted in the LAM application does not match the LAM application architectural drawings. Uh, 827 extends east from South Capitol Street, southwest 73 feet um, from the street lot line of South Capitol Street, southwest 73 feet. Uh, this is accurately reflected in the plat for the LAM application. However, in the LAM application, architectural drawings, it, apparent, it is apparent Lot 827 extends east from the street lot line much further than 73 feet and into lot 70. This is not clear from the submitted plat because the LAM application does not provide the quote, other information needed to understand the project, such as the start point of lot 70. Analysis of plot, informa plat information from adjacent lots makes it clear that the courtyard in the LAM application is actually located in lot 70 thus not appropriately part of the lots subject to design review approval in this application. Lot 68 and lot 69 extend 70 feet east from South Capitol Street Southwest. Uh, again, not shown in the LAM application plat. Um, as stated above, uh, lot 827 extends 73 feet east from South Capitol Street Southwest. However, the LAM's courtyard does not end three feet past uh, or the, the the wall does not end three feet past lot 68 or 69, uh, despite the street lot line for 827 being set back from South Capitol Street the same number of feet. Uh, thus, the LAM application does not show the location of the proposed project, does not show the location of all buildings and structures, easements, walkways, and other open spaces, and does not readily provide the information necessary to understand the project. Yeah, I, um, I definitely need that uh, in the record. And, and we'll and we have uh, like maps and all that stuff, so it, it'll be in the record. We'll submit. After okay. That. All right. Thank Chairman you, Let's Hood, see. He, Chairman Hood. If I may, he submitted it earlier, so um, we took it out. So I will go in right now and add it. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see if we have any commissioner questions first. Uh, colleagues, any questions, Commissioner May? Yeah, I'm, uh, Mr. Teresa, you're, at this moment, it just sounds like you're trying to understand right. the dimensions of the project and that's yeah. kind of all, or that leads to somewhere else? Um, well, we, we, are, we are trying to understand, but we, we are opposed because, uh, you know, th there is an issue with the easement. Uh, we don't think that it's a valid easement agreement. I know that's not the jurisdiction of zoning, um, right. but also, uh, there is going to be impacts to the easement, and and that is the jurisdiction of zoning. Um, how how a project impacts others, um, and so they will be uniquely impacted by that as it as 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 my clients share that space um, with them. And so um, we we want to know uh, more. Yes, um, and, and right now we do oppose. Okay. All right. Well. Hopefully, I mean, the applicant uh, earlier agreed to provide a drawing that would clarify your questions. So hopefully that will provide the information that we need um, okay. to answer your questions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Emma Moore, any questions? No questions, sir. And Vice Chair Miller, any questions? Or... No, no, no questions or comments. Thank you for your testimony. All right, uh, I too don't have any questions. I'm looking forward to seeing um, uh, what comes out of all this as we, and, and let me just say this to my colleagues. I'm, I'm not asking for submissions. Uh, well, we can get submissions, but I, I think that we need to have a, an additional hearing. And I'm not sure if others agree, because uh, there may be some questions. <laughs> there seems to be a lot of work that needs to be done. And I don't feel comfortable just getting uh, submissions and not being able to ask the questions. So that's kind of where I am. Uh, let's see if Vice Chair Kramer, you have any questions, of Mr. Teresa? No questions, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, I want the applicant. That's what happened. I go off the top of my head, uh, Ms. Wilson. I 
No, thank you, and we'll be in touch. <clears throat> okay, great. Now, you all are going to work both with the A and C, and also with Mr. Teresa. Okay, great, great. All right, so I don't know if you need a closing or rebuttal right now at this state, uh, but I think we can we can uh, end it there. But let me also mention, and I, I failed to mention this, uh, we did have correspondence from DACD as well as DOEE uh, as far as other government reports. I didn't mention that. So it sounds like we have some additional work that is going to be taking place uh, in this case. I'm not sure, Michelle, if we have a date or do we need to let the applicant or do we need to advertise again or what, how, how do we need to work all that? Michelle, you're muted. You're muted. We do not need to um, uh, re advertise this um, because we're doing it from the dais. But what do you want to give direction about what you want at the next hearing? Um, you know, because obviously you don't want to do everything again. So is it just for you guys to ask questions? Do you want them to submit certain documents? <clears throat> I, be, I believe that there's a lot of work that I, at least unless I hear from my colleagues, I think it's a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, I think Ms. Wilson and, and all the, the agency and the parties know what needs to be done. I don't necessarily think we can sit here and pick it out. I think for as far as I'm concerned, it's still open everything. Unless my colleagues disagree, I'm just looking. Okay, no. so everything's still open, selling that we can come up with a date. Okay, then in that case, um. I have um, um, maybe we should see how much time they need first. Yeah, because I <laughs> really not having any dates available. Yeah, six months or two months, three months. Tell us. Uh, let's start with you, Ms. Wilson. Um, Rich may have something to add, but I would say. Um, Two months just to give us the opportunity to uh, continue to work with the ANC and possibly attend, um, you know, a couple more executive meetings, then that would be helpful as well. Okay, so 1 thing I am looking at, and I've always been concerned about the summer, uh, but let me hear from Ms. Kramer and also from Mr. Teresa. What I just need to do is check the calendar on when the ANC meeting is so we, because I'd like to be able to have a. Make sure that if we need to vote for the ANC, that we can accommodate that. Can you wait two seconds and I'll just see what the date is? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Teresa, she said two months. Does that work for you? Um, my calendar actually ends in June. Okay. So I do have some days and some end of my calendar. Um, so, yeah, I have time in, in June. Two months is fine. Okay. If we can't do it in June, I am not favorable for July because July is when people go, even though they're going to start going in June, but I don't like when people go on vacations and we make decisions like this. Uh, that's just, I don't know, my colleagues may differ with me, but that's kind of where I've always been. I'm consistent. <laughs> I do have one date available in June, the 23rd. Okay, that's a good uh... Well, that gives us, is that enough time for us? Yeah, sorry. Uh, I don't know whether anybody else, has, we have our ANC meeting is on the 13th, so we could do that. Okay, so June 23rd at four o'clock. Okay. And um, that would mean, uh, I, I just ask if you want submission so that you can have documents submitted so that you're not just having a blank hearing without anything being submitted so um that's the only reason why i'm asking because if nothing is submitted then you're having a hearing without anything being submitted um chairman hood um for so, the so let me, let me explain to you my let me explain my position from what i've heard tonight that's why i want to set down from now on because <laughs> that would have alleviated this it's to me i think we need to start a fresh hand of comments i've heard from uh commissioner may uh, the comments I've also heard from Vice Chair uh, Kramer and also Mr. Teresa. I, I, I was—that's why I was kind of hinting earlier about two hours ago of 
maybe we should not have moved forward from what all the things that I was hearing. So I don't know if others feel that way. Maybe they don't. That's four of us here today, uh, Commissioner May. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what I would hope is that we are not repeating everything that we heard tonight, right? So it can be a more focused uh, presentation that that addresses the issues that were raised tonight, as opposed to just starting from scratch and doing the whole thing over again. Because um, I think it can be a little bit more efficient than a 50 minute presentation. Let me hear from Commissioner Ema Moore. I would agree, Mr. Chairman, that uh, the next uh, presentation should be more focused and just uh, on the issues that we've raised tonight and just crosswalk that uh, with uh, what we've heard today. So that way it's a one for one. So, you know, the commission expressed uh, this concern. This is how we addressed it. So that way we can uh, go through it pretty quickly. Are you muted? Okay, I don't know. Right, sure. Miss right, uh, uh, Commissioner Kramer, we can hear your conversation. Uh, sorry. sorry. That's all right. You might want to mute unless you're saying something good about us, but if you're saying something bad, bad you might want to mute. <laughs> uh, Vice Chair Miller. Yeah, no, I, I agree. There were specific uh, questions, um, specific concerns, specific issues that were raised. Uh, I know Ms. Wilson is aware of them. I saw people writing notes down. I was writing notes down too. Uh, I, I, so I think they will come back with uh, responses to those issues. Uh, one way or the other, and the ANC will have an opportunity if um, maybe Ms. Shellen will lay out some dates uh, so that uh, for for something to be su submitted that the ANC and the party and opposition can respond to, and then we can have go from there. Well, I actually don't disagree, but I just think for me, the way I'm going to look at this is going to be a whole new case. Some of the things that we've hashed out today that really did not get us anywhere. I'm looking forward to a more comprehensive uh, approach. We know what the issues are. We know what the, the, the um, applicant is saying. We know what Vice Chair, uh, Vice Chair Kramer is saying. We know what Mr. Teresa's issues are. So, and they spelled them out. So those are the things we need to touch on and see how we go from a zoning perspective and how we get this taken care of and how we come closer together. Now, we may not all be holding hands, but we can work this out. That's why it's very important Ms. Wilson, as you've already stated, your opening comments actually set the tone. They set the tone for me. I want you to you follow your opening comments. We will come back here, I believe, a lot uh, closer to where we are. You agreed to work with ANC and also the part in opposition. I've heard that. Uh, Mr. Jason uh, uh, Lamb has, has agreed to that. So let's make it work. That's kind of where I am. And I, I don't disagree with my colleagues. It's 15, that should be a 15 or 20 minute hearing because they're so going to come back with, with everything together. Wouldn't that be good? give us some dates? Yes. So with that being said, um, if the applicant could provide, um, you know, have their discussions and provide something by May 26 to the parties, that's two weeks um, prior to the ANC's actual meeting. And um, so if they need to take a vote, they'll have something. Doesn't mean that you guys can't meet before then and try to come you know, holding hands and singing Kumbaya and meet with Mr. Teresa and his um, uh, clients also um, and um, and provide, you know, obviously you have to serve all of you guys serve each other. So if you could serve something by May 26, 3 o'clock PM, then they have something um, in the record. You know, whether it's about your meetings, maybe you guys have already agreed to everything, whatever, and then the parties would have until um, the 16th of June to file responses. And the applicant, too, would be able to file a response to anything the parties um, submit to. All right, it sounds like we're all on the same page. Does anyone have anything else? Can I just clarify that you're still using the 23rd as the date that we'll come back to the zoning commission, right? Thank At you. 4 p.m. Right. 20, uh, Mr. Baron 20. will be handling that one for you. I will not be here. Mr. Baron. Oh, okay. June 23rd? June 23rd. June, 23rd. June two months. Oh. Oh. 
All right, anything else? Um, that would be it. Okay, I want to thank everyone. Although for I, one other thing, I'm sorry, Mr. Ridding, do you want um, draft findings, facts, conclusions of law also provided if they choose to do so? I know the applicant has to, but um, do you want them to provide those also, Mr. Ridding, before the hearing, since this is a one vote or after? Uh, afterward would be okay. Okay, so we'll wait until after they you guys take this up for decision. So we won't worry about that. I'm sorry, Chairman Hood. Yeah, I think I think thank you. Uh, I think that's better for afterwards. Yeah. We don't know where we're going to be. It's going to happen. All right. Okay. All right. So um, I want to thank everyone. I am not uh, closing anything. I am uh, uh, delaying or continuing the hearing to June 23rd at 4 p.m. I want to right. thank everyone for their participation. And we'll see you on June the 23rd at 4 p.m. Good night. Good night.